welcome to our September 2nd Council meeting. So we are um, just returning from our executive session, so we will be moving into actually item number four, which is general public comments. General public comments are for non-agenda items. So if you have an issue that you would like to speak about that is not on our agenda this evening, please rise and head to the podium and please state your name, address, and you have three minutes. Uh, Robert Rovner, 4 King Street. Uh, last night, uh, my wife and I had just gotten home from a, a long weekend away, and we were informed that one of our neighbors passed away mm. unexpectedly, Judy Shirk, who many of you know, um, was a longtime resident of Pine Point, and she loved Pine Point. Um, very outspoken and lovable at the same time. We became very fast friends when we bought a house in 2007. She was instrumental, along with Pat DeGrinney, in starting the Fourth of July parade that grows every year down at Pine Point, and that has become, in my estimation, almost like a quintessential local color parade, and we in Pine Point are all grateful for both of them for starting this. When the years ago when the land swap took place, she was appointed to the committee to help create the path that now exists at Snowberry Ocean View Park. Um, I believe and would like the council to consider um, in her memory uh, renaming this or at least incorporating her memory into this as a Judy Shirk Memorial Ocean uh, Path or Beach Path. Um, she just loved Pine Point. She was the unofficially and proclaimed herself the matriarch of Pine Point many times. And I just think that her memory should live on forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rover. Does anybody else wish to speak? All right. Seeing none, I will close the general public comment. So, on to our next item, which is item number five, is the minutes from the August 19th, 2015 regular meeting. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. And is there any discussion, errors, omissions? Cody, as always, your minutes are perfect. <laughs> All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Next item is item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are none at this time. Item number seven is treasurer's warrants, and I will find them later in the meeting. So our next item is order number 15-062, 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on an order designating the Avesta Housing Affordable Housing Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District and adopting the development program for such district. Um, again, this is a public hearing, so is there anybody that wishes to speak on this matter? And so. Oh. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Shauna Cook Mueller. I uh, represent the town of Scarborough on various issues and have been um, working with town staff on um, reviewing and, and preparing the proposal before you um, that has come to us from uh, Avesta. Um, and I just wanted to give you a brief overview for the purpose. I know the council is familiar with this application, but tonight is the public hearing and for the benefit of everyone to have a little bit more background on what this proposed TIF is. Um, what's before the council this evening is um, a tax increment financing district that will surround the Avesta Southgate affordable housing project. Um, what it does is it will freeze the assessed value, um, the current assessed value on that property, and any increased assessed value um, will be captured in the TIF district if the council approves this. Um, what that means is that taxes paid on that increased assessed value will go into a segregated TIF fund and not into the town's general fund. And for a period of 17 years, there will be a 50% split between the town's housing initiative fund and um, Avesta Southgate, Avesta Housing, will receive a reimbursement on future property taxes paid for the other 50%. Um, 
that's the, the in a nutshell the proposal. I also wanted to state that there is a, a lengthy council order that is really the subject of this um, decision tonight, and the reason for that is the TIF statute requires us to contain certain things. So um, within that order, it authorizes um, the town manager to submit the approved TIF district by the council to Maine State Housing Authority for final review and approval. Um, we also have included language that delegates authority to the town manager to make minor changes to the application materials in order to facilitate the approval at Maine State Housing Authority. On occasion, the attorney there requests certain things to be changed about the application, but no changes would be made to that basic deal that I just described. And, and obviously, your town manager is smart enough to know how far he should make changes before coming back to you. Um, I think that's all I'll say for now, but I'm here for questions if you'd like. And I believe that there is a representative um, from Avesta here also. Would you like to say something, Kyle? Okay. Hi, my name is Kyle Ambler, Real Estate Development Officer for Avesta. Um, if any, any members of the public or the town council have any additional questions above any of the items that Shanna mentioned, please let me know. Thank you very much. So um, we don't actually have a motion yet. We're so, still in public hearing. So we're still in public hearing. So hold that thought. We, we might we might come back to. You. Was there anybody from the public that wished to um, speak on this item or have any questions about the Avesta project? Um, it's also fondly known as the Southgate House up in Dunstan. Um, any questions? All right. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion from the council. Move approval. Second. So now we can have some. Did Kate, do you have any questions? Uh, I just got. I discussion, not a question. Uh, I just wanted to say, I, um, I, I, this is not anything new. I think I mentioned this at our last when we talked about this last time, and I've discussed it with a few other counselors. I'm not overly excited about this project. Um, uh, we, I believe we need it. I would be more excited if this included additional housing that fit larger um, families or um, elderly people that, you know, needed more room. Um, I have con some concerns with the limit of the one bedroom and the efficiencies. I think that really limits the people that can go into those housing um, areas, and that sort of bothers me. The reason that I'm glad it's on the agenda and I am going to vote for it and, move, and I hope it moves forward is because I think it is finally getting affordable housing back on our agenda and back out in the public and I'm hoping that this will help raise more awareness of the fact that there's a huge need in Scarborough for affordable housing. I mean, we've got teachers and firefighters and police officers and our elderly that can't afford to live in this town anymore. Um, and that's a real problem. And so my, my hope is that by allowing this and passing this and getting it through, that we can um, strike up more conversations and find more land and more developers that can come in and will follow through with their commitments to help us build um, larger affordable housing neighborhoods um, and areas in this town. Thank you, Kate. Anybody else have any questions or discussion? Or All right. Well, I will jump. You look like you might raise your hand, so no? Okay. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> uh, the, this project uh, will not go forward unless we do the, uh, the TIF. Uh, it needs to get uh, funding approval at the state level, uh, uh, or it just doesn't make financial sense. Uh, the building is an historic building that is very important to the town of Scarborough, uh, and this will allow for its restoration and preservation. And that's, that's a big part of why I think all seven of us probably will strongly support this and endorse this. Uh, 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 it's, uh, it's what would be called a win-win. The money is split 50-50. Uh, that would be the tax money. Uh, we're proposing, I believe, to use the money uh, for additional affordable housing uh, projects in the future, so that uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not just lost; uh, it's retained and used for a purpose where uh, we need to develop a reserve so as to be able to afford to produce workforce housing, affordable housing uh, uh, for pro uh, like projects like this. Go. Okay. 
Can I just piggyback on that for a sec? Um, sure. Okay. Um, I just want to say, following up on something that Councillor Donovan said, uh, just reminded me of it. We did um, have this last uh, two weeks ago talk about this is when we first passed this and we had a presentation um, and they did a wonderful job and we were the council was levied with a email um, that was had some pretty derogatory things stated um, towards the council and I think it's important to know that this was not just pushed through because we think that we're going to get a bunch of money out of this deal. Mm -hmm. um, that is in no way, shape, or form why this council is supporting this deal. And I think it's important that that's stated and known. Um, we have a, a historical building that is going to be partially saved out of this deal, and that's a, that's a big thing for Scarborough. We don't have a lot of um, stuff left in this town, unfortunately, that has historical value. Um, so there's many pieces of this as to why they were so supportive of this. So if somebody has questions and wants to have a good conversation and ask us you know, the details behind it and why we're fully supporting it. If you weren't able to catch the last meeting, then I know anyone here would be very willing to discuss that. Um, those are the kinds of discussions that are fruitful and beneficial. Sending an email and levying, um, you know, some pretty harsh comments towards us is not a productive way for us to help you understand why we're, we're pushing this forward. There was a lively discussion at the last meeting and a lot of questions were asked and Avesta was very open with us and um, really good at answering our concerns. And so that's why we're, we're most of us, I think, are um, so in favor of this. Sorry, thank you. Anybody else? All right, so Jessica's two cents. Um, what's not to love? It's, uh, I'm a liaison for historic preservation, and I'm liaison on affordable housing. Um, I, I think it's a great step and, and a, a, an awesome direction. Um, you know, affordable housing and apartment level type housing is, is in huge demand. Um, of course, um, this what we're talking about tonight is about the TIF, which is you know, capturing the increased value of the property when, once it's been um, revamped. Um, you know, again, just to, you know, it, although the TIF doesn't necessarily pertain to this, but without the TIF, the project doesn't move, move forward. Um, it is a 2-4. It's a um, historic structure. It certainly will um, likely meet the criteria of um, the, the scrutiny of the federal level of historic preservation. Um, it's a uh, as it's homage to the King family, which are the founders of, um, you know, first Governor of Maine, um, and then and his brother was helped craft the um, Constitution. Um, so it's got a great history. I'm more than happy to support this. I think this is a great investment, um, and I think it's a great way to salvage a, a building that has a lot of unique history behind it. And, um, you know, again, the great thing about the tax increment district is that we will be for 17 years recapturing um, or capturing half of that value to have potential ability to do a project again in the future. Um, so with that, does anybody else wish to speak? And seeing none, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. So old business, there is none at this time. And we are under new business. And I am going to um, offer that we break the rules a little bit here. And we have two orders in front of us. Both are very closely related. Um, I'm sure there's uh, probably a good many of you. That's why you're here this evening. Um, so I will entertain, as long as my fellow counselors don't mind, that we take public comment on both topics. The only request I have is if you're going to speak, just let us know which one you're speaking to first. Um, so our next order is 15-068, first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 601, the Town of Scarborough Traffic Ordinance, Section 25, Parking Restrictions, Section A, Parking Restrictions, Subsection 2, Higgins Beach. So again, um, I think as long as nobody objects, we'll be willing to listen, um, public, public input and uh, the public hearing or on both items. So if you'd like to speak, please rise, come to the podium, name and address. I want to read the other order. And, I'll, and the other order is order number 15-069. First reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments of Chapter 612, the Town of Scarborough Ordinance creating rules and regulations for use of parks and recreational facilities by adding a new section 19 dressing. Hi, 
um, thank you so much for uh, giving us a chance to weigh in on a pretty um, important issue. And uh, I wanted to my, identify myself. My name is Tim Cronin, and I'm a resident of South Portland, actually. But <clears throat> my family and I, we've been frequenting and utilizing and enjoying Higgins Beach for 25 some odd years. And um, I, um, just so you know, I'm, I'm an educator for the city of Portland. I'm a family of six, and so we oftentimes hit the beach, and we hit the beach um, early in the morning because it's so beautiful, and uh, we recreate there and have been doing so and enjoying such a beautiful place for so long. And it's really uh, important and dear to us, and by the way, I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot, I'm addressing the parking uh, uh, ordinance up at stake. And um, so, sorry, my phone, of course, cut out with all my notes. <laughs> um, but um, uh, one thing that I've been able to do is to en engender a love of the sea in my children by exposing them to early morning light down there. Uh, they love going surfing, they love fishing, skimboarding, and all kinds of activities, beachcombing. But um, it's really special uh, in early in the morning and late at day, late in the day. And I think that um, the tables have turned now where my my son, who's 13, wakes me up at 5 o'clock and is saying, hey, Dad, let's go, let's go down there and see this beautiful light and go surfing. And I think that in, in, in the time that I've been there, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's considerable what it's, it's done for my children and my family. Uh, oftentimes, before work, I can get down there quickly and have a, have a great time and then get back to work in time. And it's because of our access to the parking right up front. Um, in the, when I, we go down there, I ask my children to please be quiet. I ask them to please be considerate. There's residents here. And so in the 25 years that I've been there, I've seen maybe one or two t incidences of uh, teenagers. They, they can be loud sometimes. but. For the most part, the vast majority of people are considerate. They, they imagine, you know, they they just are so appreciative of the access to the beach, and so, and you know, they're they're reasonable. So they, ma I imagine that they imagine what it would be like to live there. Um, sometimes uh, in the winter time, I used to go down to the beach uh, at 5 a.m. Uh, not in the winter time, but. Uh, in the summertime, but now with the six o'clock ordinance, I can no longer go down there because unless uh, if the uh, if the gates open at the parking lot, we'll pull in there. But sometimes the gate isn't open um, all year round at the at, at dawn like the, it's supposed to be, and so it is prohibitive and, and it can be a loss in our quality of life. Um, I don't want to speak for just our interests. I do believe that the vast majority of the Metro Portland community may feel the same way uh, as us, and so I just wanted to weigh in with one per, uh, one family's opinion and, and speak in opposition to the ordinance. And so, uh, thank you for your consideration. Um, as far as the changing goes, um, truthfully, um, we often we are surfers, but that's not all we are. Uh, we do change. We try to change uh, at home so that one because it's usually freezing, but uh, we, we change because uh, it's just easier to change at home and then change when we get home. But we've been so grateful for the development of the uh, of the of the uh, bathrooms where you can change, and it's really civil. It's very nice. But sometimes it's either closed or it's not accessible. I can't tell you exactly what day and why, but sometimes it hasn't been. So in short, when we when and if we are, we're forced to change and we try to not do so, uh, we do so very discreetly, and I ask my children to be quiet and careful, and we try to change in our cars. Sometimes you can't, but, um, uh, and we are appreciative of all that the community has done to provide that resource up at the bathhouse, but sometimes it's just not doable. Um, I, I do think that the vast majority of surfers are discreet, they are considerate, uh, and they represent all walks of life down there, and that they're, it's become the norm to be interested in surfing and changing your, into your wetsuit down there, and I think it represents a considerable amount of the constituency. Um, so I also speak uh, in opposition to the, the dressing ordinance, and I say this with all due respect. 
And so thank you for your time, and that's it. Okay. Just um, just so everyone's aware, I know I had a couple of the light went off. Uh, I we're going to allow for six minutes where okay. they're speaking on both both items. So. Hi there, my name is Douglas Lundy, it's 26 Fowler Farm Road, Scarborough, and I can speak about both. Correct? I've just got to say which one is which. Um, <laughs> okay, let's start with the first one: reducing the morning parking hour from six to, uh, sorry, from 6 a.m. down to 7 a.m. Um, I'm down there 6 a.m. every morning. I walk my dog there. Um, I'm down there about 45 minutes. I'm literally down there every morning and also every evening walking the dog. I also surf when I can. Uh, so I see this from a sur surfer's perspective too. But more often than not, I'm walking the dog because that's my duty every day. Um, when I go down there at 6 a.m. in the morning, it's usually very quiet. There's hardly anybody there. There's dog walkers and surfers. That they do their thing. And they get back in the car and uh, and they go home. Also, there's people who turn up who want to walk and they've got difficulty walking. Um, there's several people like that. Um, you, if this ordinance goes through and you reduce it down to 7 a.m., you're effectively preventing the people who have difficulty walking from visiting the beach at that time. Um, if you go down there at 6 a.m. every morning, you'll meet Pete and Joan. They're always down there. They've got canes. They walk from their car. From, they park up there. They do not have handicap plates. They, they, they refuse to go and get a handicap plate. They, they take their chances with everybody else. They walk down into the surf, and they walk halfway down the beach. Peter goes up ahead of, ahead of Joan because Joan can hardly walk. Uh, they do their little walk. They, they stand in the surf. They go back to their car, and they leave. If you put this to 7 a.m. in the morning, they're not going to be able to go down there early in the morning for the sunrise. Full stop. Um, you also reduce the available time in the morning for all the working people. Time is limited. It really is. If you're a working person in the morning, you're not retired, you're working. It is very limited time. If you make those people walk from the parking lot, you're going to waste another 10, 15 minutes with a round trip. You might say that's no big deal. Well, that's no big deal for somebody who doesn't work. If you're retired, it's fine. If you've got all the, all the day to go down to the beach, that's fine. If you're a working person, you're in a rush. Reducing the hours from 6 to 7 a.m., well, this would definitely not work in winter. Uh, I'm sorry. The lot is often closed. Uh, the sidewalks are never, ever plowed during winter. You can't even walk down them. Uh, so you would effectively prevent the public from visiting the beach before 7 a.m. in the morning, which is probably the best time to go down there for any working person who's going down there. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried walking down the road in the middle of winter. There's a lot of snow on those sidewalks. But all, the, all the plows come do, they plow the road straight onto the sidewalk. It's, you can't use them. So you're going to get people going down there, push chairs, old people, surfers with long boards, everything, all the way down that, that road and it will be carnage. It, it's not going to work. Um, the changing ordinance, I'll speak about that. But if you had a changing ordinance, I'm sorry, but that would create complete confusion for all residents of Scarborough. Why implement a new ordinance for everyone just because a minority of people object to people changing? I'm sorry. People change in a towel. They've been doing it for years. There's no problem with that. Uh, it's a ridiculous ordinance. Everybody knows it, and it would take us but probably back to Victorian times. If you want to go back to Victorian times, then that's the finest way of doing it. Um, also, imagine the crowds that are leaving the beach at the end of a hot summer's day. We, we've all been down there on a hot summer's day. It's crowded. They're all going to be walking down Ocean Avenue in their swimming gear, bikinis, shorts, whatever, everything that this ordinance is objecting to. They're going to be walking down Ocean Avenue and then all trying to change down at the bathhouse in the parking lot all at the same time. If you can imagine what that's going to be like, you can only imagine. So I think this ordinance is completely ridiculous. Changing in and out of a wetsuit is really no big deal to... 99% of the population. It really isn't. You've got to wear a wetsuit in Maine. The water's cold. You've got to wear a wetsuit. 
You've got to get out of your car, get into a wetsuit. You, some, some people can do it at home. A lot of people can't. It's difficult to change into a wetsuit. If you're a six-foot guy, it's virtually impossible to change into a wetsuit in a car. You've got to do it standing up. There's no other way. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, my name is Connor Bellavo. I'm from Portland. Uh, speaking on both issues, starting uh, with the parking, I suppose, but they might bleed into each other a little bit. Uh, first off, just wanted to confirm that if you are over six feet, uh, you cannot change into a wetsuit in the car, as the last speaker said. Um, but jokes aside, you know, I really think this is an issue uh, of access, which is something that people up and down the main coast know a lot about, not just surfers. Um, Anybody using the coastline or beach to recreate in any way, uh, commercial users, fishermen especially, I mean, I think there's a reason why a lot of fishermen use floating docks, tend their gear, because there's nowhere to go. So I think big picture-wise, this is really important. Uh, Portland South, most beaches, uh, almost everyone has their own rules and regs. It's not exact, exactly a, a walk in the park to just go to the beach. Um, there's usually fees, restricted parking, hours for dogs, uh, all kinds of rules, um, which I think generally people abide by. Um, I don't recall which newspaper article I read in response uh, to this ordinance, essentially saying that there had not been any noise complaints uh, between the hours of 6 and 7 a.m. Um, therefore, to restrict the hours and push it back 60 minutes longer just seems completely ridiculous. Um, as a working person, uh, t touching on the last speaker's comments, uh, means a huge deal to me uh, when I do surf. In fact, uh, I surf, surf at Scarborough Beach more often uh, than Higgins because it's easier in access, uh, to access it with, with the pass. Uh, but bottom line, if you can't get there by 7, until 7, uh, it's not going to happen on a work day. Um, and any surfer will tell you that. Uh, get it up, drive, wetsuit, change, in the water, out, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty much my, my point there. You know, born and raised in Maine, and, and basically this ordinance, this proposed ordinance, really stinks to me as being very un-Maine um, in its scope and, and in its content. Uh, I grew up in a small town, as I'm sure many people here did. Small town, big town, our biggest town, 60,000 people, and we still know each other. Uh, and there's a level of trust here in our communities that is really cool, and I think that's why a lot of us are here. So uh, to sort of have these arbitrary rules changes, uh, I'm not into it. So I'm against that ordinance, uh, also against the dressing ordinance. And to me, this one's really simple. Um, I've surfed all over the world in cultures, uh, many of which are way more conservative than our culture here. And I have never gotten anything but thumbs up and claps out a car window when I'm putting my wetsuit on. That's not because I'm exposing anybody. That's because people are excited. And surfers are generally very considerate. Uh, and they're there getting into their wetsuit as fast as possible because the goal is out there across the beach. Um, so basically, if there's an issue with that, uh, the people that have said issue really have no place at the beach. Uh, skin is exposed at the beach, uh, bottom line. Um, and if you see knees down on the road versus a woman in a bikini or a man in a bathing suit on the beach, uh, to me, I just don't, I don't quite get it. So uh, strongly opposed to both, and I urge you uh, uh, to reject both of those ordinances tonight. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Katie Foley, 3 Lucky Lane. Um, I'm opposed to both. I'm speaking not to both. Can I speak to both? Okay, great. Uh, opposed to both for a variety of reasons, um, but to make it personal, um, I just want to talk about my own, my, myself and my own handicap. Um, I, don't, I don't shared the story with some folks, uh, some people know it, some people don't, but I was born with a congenital deformity called club feet. Um, normally this happens to young boys and it's typically found in one foot. I'm female and I got it really severe in both feet, so uh, instead of winning the lottery, I got club feet. Um, but I've had 14 corrective surgeries. Um, I was the youngest of five very uh, rambunctious kids. Some of you know my sibling in town. And so I did really well following my siblings around and making myself be active. Um, about three years ago, or four years ago, however, um, 
I was having some problems with my ankles, and uh, doctors have told me that, you know, do you want to walk in another 10 years? Do you want to run in another 10 years? What do you want to, you've got to stay active. You've got to keep moving. And so I wake up every day, and I feel probably what most 70, 80, 90-year-old folks feel because of the scar tissue. Um, so what does that mean? It, it means that I have some pain that, you know, maybe most folks don't have. Um, but it also means I have to keep moving. The salt water is amazing for my feet. When I walk in the ocean, it, it's like there's nothing else like that. Um, but I am slow. doesn't stop me. I completed my first triathlon this summer, and I'm going to do another one next summer. Um, but I was curious as I started to think about all sides of this issue, and I really did. I've, like, looked at all sides, you know. What would taking that hour away in the morning mean? Um, well, as two people have already spoken to, it does discriminate, in my opinion, against the, the working class, so there's that piece. Um, but it's also, it's, it's pretty limiting in access as it is. So I timed myself, because I'm slow, and I walk slow. Um, how long would it take me at dead low tide if I parked on Bayview and, and walked all the way out to, you know, the point where it's, you can almost, you almost feel like you can jump over the river there and come back? It took me almost 40, 45 minutes because I walk slow, um, and that's me. And I, and I know there's other stories out there like that. So even at an hour uh, of parking, we're somewhat limited. So I believe the compromise that was achieved only three, four years ago, 2011, I believe um, that that should be honored. Um, and it's time to say no more. Enough is enough. Uh, I feel strongly that we have two really, we have the ordinances that are on the books, um, if we were to educate and enforce, uh, is, is all we need. Um, the other piece of this is uh, I've been really fortunate this summer. I call this my summer of fun employment because I, um, I am in between. I just finished my MBA, and I'm going to be looking for work if anyone's out there hiring. Um, but, but what it, that has done is it's, it's allowed me to spend probably as much time at the beach as I did when I first moved here when I was 20 years old, and I fell in love with the state of Maine. And what I will tell you about that experience is, and it was Higgins Beach specifically that, that I fell in love with and why I stayed, um, it's different. It's changed. So I'm sure a lot of people will speak to that. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to have a culture that doesn't accept and work with each other. Um, there's a tension down there, and it makes me really sad. It, it makes me sad to see neighbors pit against neighbors. Um, with such an amazing, wonderful place. So uh, I feel like the town is spending an exorbitant amount of resources uh, at Higgins. Um, and so for, as for an example, uh, six to seven officers a day, every time I've been at Higgins Beach, I've seen. I've been on three, Pine Point three times, never saw a single officer on Pine Point. And there's ten times the people over at that <coughs> beach. The... Uh, Zoning for Higgins Beach that was discussed last night. I think the town spent somewhere close to forty thousand dollars on a community be simply because three hundred and fifty houses can't decide that they all want to um, they don't like what their neighbor did in the terms of their remodel. There's something here that's bigger than just this issue, and we can solve it, but we have got to look each other in the eye and be human again. so that's my opinion. I hope that you'll consider um, standing up for the entire town uh, and the surrounding areas and preserve and protect the limited access that we already have and enjoy. Thank you. Um, my name is Tom Siebert. I am the son-in-law of Preston Levitt, who owns property uh, directly across the street from the parking spaces that are being discussed tonight. Um, I just want to refute a, a few things I've heard, but before I do that, I want to agree with the previous uh, uh, person here who was talking about how we have to work together as a partnership here. I think what's particularly important is that both sides of this issue, the public and the counselors here, have to work together as, in a partnership to alleviate some of the um, bad feelings that come up out of these rather minor issues, I should say. So I want to refute specifically the noise issue, because we have certainly complained 
many times in writing to the town over the last several years about the noise issues that have come about because of the designated parking spaces on Bayview Ave. At five o'clock in the morning, often in the summer, we are awoken by noises related to the cars coming in. The door is slamming, the backup beepers, the beepers of the doors locking and unlocking. This is all very disturbing at five o'clock in the morning when you're trying to rest, okay? So this is my main point, is that the noise is considerable. It is not nothing, and we have on many occasions written and complained about this. So I don't quite understand where the idea is that it's not an issue for us. It is. It's certainly been for a very long time. Um, we have to rent our property. We cannot, we're not rich. We, we cannot afford to hold on to it if we cannot rent it to pay the taxes and some of the upkeep. The renters that we have are not happy with the situation. They don't want to be woken up at 5 o'clock in the morning. They're paying a lot of money to rent a place near Higgins Beach. They all are complaining to us about how the conditions have changed in the last few years, okay? They've all thought that Higgins Beach used to be a quiet, uh, family-friendly, safe, uh, environment for the, to, to bring their families and to have big family reunions, and they, they just do not feel that it is living up to that anymore. So I know we all feel the same way about the beach. We want to protect it. We want to save it. We want to maintain it. Uh, so we have to come to some consensus, some agreement, some partnership about how to deal with these issues. I don't think asking for a seven o'clock parking restriction should be that big a deal. Everybody, you know, I, I have nothing against the surfers. I like to surf myself, okay? The problem is everyone that's come up here has described how the seven o'clock thing would affect them in a very slight way. I mean, all you have to do is walk another 800 feet to the parking lot. This is not a big deal. So I understand they feel generally they're losing some degree of access, okay? So what? You know, another 800 feet is not going to kill anyone. In fact, for the dog walkers, it'll give them more exercise. So I really don't understand that argument. So anyway, I've made my case, and uh, hopefully you will support the, uh, the ordinance. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Joel Norton, and I live at 13 Nelson. Um, to the last speaker's point, and I'm addressing the parking situation, um, the problem that I see with that is um, essentially what, what he's saying is that there is noise at the street level um, adjacent to Hagen's Beach. Well, the parking lot is also adjacent to homes. And that parking lot is unrestricted, and you can be there at 5 a.m. in the morning. And nobody's, nobody's saying anything about the, the folks that live there. But the street is much more important for some reason, and I don't understand that. Um, so uh, I think that he's right about saying that we absolutely need to work together. Um, surfing is a huge part of my life. It's, um, it's something that I do every opportunity that I get. And... So restricting that access to 7 a.m. is, to me, the same as shutting off or not starting the ski lifts at 9, until 9.30 a.m. instead of 8.30 a.m. It's one less hour that you have of daylight to enjoy the things that we live here in Maine to do. We I mean, we live here to recreate. That's a huge part of our lives. Um, so it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, it's a huge deal to me, in fact. Um, an hour is, is a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time to start with. Um, and if it, you know, I, I, I get it that it upsets a number of people that live along that street because of the noise levels. I understand that. But there are, <laughs> there are other scenarios there where that same thing exists. And if we start there, you know, it's, it's, it, maybe it doesn't stop. Maybe the, maybe the people next, that live next to the parking lot, all of a sudden they don't want us parking there anymore. 
and then we don't have access. I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily know that that's going to be that, that that would ever be the case, but you're not you're not you're not actually working together by saying, okay, you guys just stop coming here at six o'clock in the morning. You come at seven because I need to sleep. We all need to sleep. Cars go by my house. The buses go by my house much before seven a.m. They wake me up. It's part of living in a town where you're next to people. It's just a fact of life. It's not that impossible thing to say, hey, you know what? Okay, so it's loud outside. Let's try to insulate ourselves from the noise a little bit. Whatever, you get some blinds that maybe insulate a little bit better. Whatever the situation is, there's a way to work around it, and it's not by removing access for those people who enjoy that beach from 6 to 7 a.m. ever. That's, that's all I have to say on the parking ordinance. The changing ordinance, I would just agree with um, the, my fellow surfer, Connor. Um, you're not seeing anything. I mean, if, you, if you've got a bathing suit on, absolutely. You have the same level, uh, you have the same sight of skin as if you had a towel wrapped around your waist. No surfer wants to be caught with a towel down on the pavement <laughs> with their sweatsuit around their ankles. I mean, you're very cautious when you're changing. Um, it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling to begin with, but like everybody said, there's really no other way to do it. It's just that's, that's how surfing works as a sport. You can change at home, which I usually do. I, I put my wetsuit on at home and I come to the beach that way, but I can't get in my car with, with leather or cloth seats, it doesn't matter, with a soaking wet wetsuit. Um, I, sometimes if I'm parked down there, I have to take my wetsuit off there. And you say, well, you run up to the, the changing room. Okay, well, let's count how long that takes. If I have a very time limited uh, or a very limited amount of time to actually change out of my wetsuit or go surfing, I can't, I, I can't run up to the parking lot. That's impossible. It takes me literally 25 minutes to go up, change, come back down with all my stuff and get back to my car. That's a huge time commitment. You know, so I think that the, the, the changing ordinance just, I, I get it, I get it, but I don't think anybody's really being that offended. We're all, you know, the people that are down there that are, that are, that are enjoying the beach, they're all beachgoers. They get it. You're going to see, you're going to see people in their bathing suits and in skin. It just happens. So I just, I, I please consider rejecting the ordinance. Thank you very much. I couldn't tell. Good evening. My name is Maureen Burns. I live at 6 Morning Street in Higgins Beach. I've spoken before. Um, I'd like to address both issues, but I'd like to do it on a broader level. Um, I'd like to address the town of Scarborough, specifically all of its residents. Um, I'm, I'm an on-surfer, but I love being at Higgins and enjoying all the aspects that it has to offer me. Um, I'm not going to, uh, to try to address the motives for those who have recommended changes of the ordinances that we already have at Higgins. I will address the fact that all the residents of Scarborough, through their taxes, have contributed to all the improvements at Higgins. The town has spent a lot of money. The seawall, the new granite stairs, the ramp, the sidewalks, the tall custom wooden fence on Bayview that's just before Morning Street, and lastly, the, mu the much improved parking lot with the showers and the toilets. And just as a aside, there were 40 parking spaces that were taken away when this improvement was made. So we've already lost a lot of access for the, for the public. Of, you know, um, these were all paid for by all the residents, as well as non-residents through the Surf Rider Foundation uh, donations. They they made a huge donation towards the uh, parking lot improvements. As a result, in fairness and decency, all people should be able to enjoy this wonderful place, not just people that live there immediately. That includes being able to park along Bayview for e easy, free access to the beach using the 11, and I repeat, only 11 spots that are, um, and specifically from 6 to 10 p.m. Um, one of the speakers spoke, and he kept complaining about no a lot of noise, and he made reference to 5 o'clock. I live right there, and my bedroom overlooks Bayview Avenue. I have my windows open, and uh, honestly, I know I've said it before, I do not hear what these other people are hearing that that would be unusual or overly 
noisy that would be very bothersome. Um, I'd also like to address the fact that it, the, you should also be able to change in and out of beach wear discreetly. The ordinance um, for no changing is the epitome of over-regulation. We, all have, we already have ordinances that address both the nudity and noise, and we're using precious city resources to try to enforce these. I, it's just out of control. Um, please don't regulate every last aspect of community life here in Scarborough. Thank you for listening, and thank you for all your work. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? My name is uh, Crystal Lee Met, and I'm part owner of Black Point Surf Shop right down here off of Black Point Road. Um, I just, I guess, we'll hit both topics here. Um, my first kind of general reminder to everyone is that it's, it is, it's, it's a beach, and it should be enjoyed, and it shouldn't be a petty, it just, everything just seems really petty to me right now, and it might just be a personal opinion, um, but you know, you're at a beach. You should be enjoying that. You shouldn't, I've heard, you know, people down there with clipboards and taking notes and making sure that the cops there and enforcing the surfing rules on a day when it's raining and it's just, it kind of gets tumbled up back and forth and it just seems that everyone's kind of butting heads. And I agree with a lot of the previous speakers where we need to be cooperating and working together. Um, as far as the, uh, the changing kind of proposal. Um, when I was little, if my sister was looking at me a certain way that I didn't want her to be looking at it, the first person I'd be like, Mom, she's looking at me funny. My mom would say, well, don't look. <laughs> I, <laughs> you see someone changing out of their wetsuit. They've just gone surfing. They've practiced, they've, you know, they feel good. They just went in the salt water. You had a good morning surf. They're not out there smoking cigarette butts and dropping beer cans on the beach. They're surfing. And you see them changing out of their wetsuits. Then don't look. Look the other way. It's, you know, it's almost like you're waiting for the inevitable to happen. And, and then when it does, you're like, oh, my gosh. It's, it, to me, it just seems a little bizarre and a little reverse. And I mean it with total respect, but just don't look. You're at a beach. And plenty of people I see down on the beach that shouldn't be what they're wearing, what they're wearing, what they're wearing it, and I'm not going to go write them a ticket. Like it just seems, it seems a little petty to me. Um, I guess the second thing would be the parking restrictions. Um, this, you know, I can understand both sides of this. My grandparents have a place down in Gloucester, Massachusetts, at Long Beach. Um, they are moving out of it this year for the reason that it has gotten very loud and it has gotten diff that's changed. There's way more people going to the beach. They just, they, you know, opened up a parking lot behind their house so now that there's even more people. So I understand that point. But I do think at the level of changing it from seven to six is a little petty. Um, I, you know, it's not like it's, opening up the beach parking from 11 o'clock to 12 p.m. at night for, you know, the, all the teenage kids to go down there and hang out. It's for the people that are trying to squeeze the surf in before work or trying to take a walk on the beach before work. It's not, it's just attacking kind of the wrong demographic, I think. Um, and <coughs> let's see here. I think that's kind of all I have to say. I just really w hope that everyone can kind of just take a step back and realize um, where they are. You bought a house at Higgins Beach. You bought a house where your neighbor is, you know, you could reach out and touch the next house. You bought that house there. If, you, if things are changing and it's inevitable that they will change, you can't kind of keep regulating everything. It just it doesn't work out that way. If things are changing, maybe it's the best idea to start looking somewhere else. I even heard people talking about, you know, trying to privatize Hig Higgins Beach. Um, you didn't buy a place in a private location. You know, I'm a taxpayer. I paid, I helped to put those stairs there. I helped to put that storm wall there. If you guys really firmly don't want naked surfers running around and, you know, just you want to put all these rules into place, then it needs to be 
privatized. You need to pay for it to be privatized. And I don't want to keep paying the plow truck driver to go down there and push snow around because I would like to use the beach before 7 o'clock in the morning. And I would like to be able to change out of my wetsuit when I'm done surfing. It seems a very silly and petty thing. And that's all I have to say. Does anybody else wish to speak? If you are interested in speaking, by do feel free to line right up at the podium. Good evening. My name is Nick Littlefield, and to speak on what everyone else is saying, you're punishing the productive. You're arbitrarily discriminating against productive members of society. We don't have the available time to go down there at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and enjoy the beach. We have to work at 8 o'clock. That means we have to be there at 5, 5.30 to get our time in, to enjoy the state that we live in to enjoy the precious resource that we pay taxes for. You're punishing the productive. And that's not right. That's a wrong message. We already live in a nation where we have workforce issues. So what you're saying is you want people that don't work, don't produce. You want them to stay away from the beach? That doesn't seem right. Just rethink what you're doing. Thank you. Hello, my name is Melissa Gates. I'm the Northeast Regional Manager for the Surfrider Foundation, uh, which is an environmental nonprofit dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's oceans, waves, and beaches. The Surfrider Main Chapter supporters are from all walks of life. We're surfers, sea kayakers, swimmers, beachgoers. We're folks who want to work together on issues that affect Maine's coastline. We work on water quality, ecosystem protection, mitigating plastic marine debris, and advancing the public's right of beach access. The Surfrider Foundation wants to extend gratitude to um, Councilwoman St. Clair for her leadership on this issue, and we thank the Council for hearing our comments today on both of the issues before you. Um, we work together with an alliance of Scarborough residents called the Higgins for All Alliance to collect signatures on a petition to urge you uh, to reject these proposals and any amendments to them this evening. We were able to collect 1,842 signatures that I passed off to your clerk earlier this evening. These are folks who urge you to reject these proposals without exception or amendment because the ordinances that are proposed don't in any way solve the root issues here at Higgins Beach. They instead would further limit and restrict the public's right of access and discriminate against specific users who wear appropriate gear to weather Maine's cold water. Because the lot is a 15-minute round-trip walk from the ocean, that beach-adjacent parking beginning at 6 a.m. is critical for maintaining access for working people who have limited time and for individuals who we've heard from tonight, too, with mobility issues, others with respiratory issues who just can't walk back and forth from the lot and they don't have the handicap permits. Parking on a public road in spots that are allocated and maintained by the town should not be restricted without any substantiated reason. And we've heard from the chief of police um, that there haven't been noise complaints during this time. I did hear the gentleman speak earlier to noise on the road. He's talking about fobs that lock and unlock your door. He's talking about closing and opening a door. Those are regular behaviors that occur on public roadways. If you live on a public road, you need to expect some level of noise like that. We're not talking about excessive noise, people you know, cranking their radio or partying on the street on Bayview. We're talking about acceptable noise on a public roadway. Further, changing in and out of a wetsuit by a beach is not a crime and really should not be a crime. People do this respectfully and discreetly, oftentimes with bathing suits underneath. So they're actually applying more clothing than they would have on normally at a beach. Scarborough also has laws already in place to address a lot of the complaints that have come forth. There are already remedies in place for illegal behavior, such as the public urination, excessive noise, and indecent exposure. The proposed ordinances that are before you are duplicative, and they're unnecessary, and they would definitely not solve any legal or perceived behavioral issues. We've tried... Um, thanks to the work of Councilwoman St. Clair, to work as a committee 
over the last six months, we had three in-person meetings, and we've exchanged hundreds of emails. These are folks from Scarborough, Higgins Beach residents, and the Surfrider Foundation, who all really angled to find community-minded solutions uh, to present here. Unfortunately, immediately after we arrived at a unanimous decision to erect permanent beach etiquette signage at Higgins, uh, within days these proposals came out of nowhere at an ordinance committee meeting without any public notice. Um, so we were kind of floored by that and we felt that the work that we had really genuinely sunk time and energy into to arrive at these community-minded solutions with everybody involved uh, were ignored. None of our proposals that came out of that were even indicated in any way in the proposed ordinances that came out. Only a couple of things that you're addressing today that came from a minority of people on that committee were brought forth. So we have been at the table. Surfrider Foundation has been advocating for a community-minded solution, and we think that is possible at Higgins, but it actually requires everyone from all sides of the issue to come together and to work on this in the spirit that it's intended, to actually come forth and be honest and forthright, to actually negotiate and come up with workable solutions that everyone can get behind. And that's not what these proposed ordinances that you're looking at tonight are. These ordinances are the minority, and you already have rules in place that address the indecent exposure, the public urination. You already have police officers that look at um, people parking beyond the one hour restriction. We haven't had excessive noise um, before 7 a.m. So why restrict parking then? Why make it illegal for people to change in and out of wetsuits in Scarborough? These things are discriminatory and they're not gonna solve any issues. So thank you for taking the time to address this issue. I really appreciate it. Anybody else? Hi, it's Harry Kane, uh, 49 Gunstock in Scarborough, and our family owns a place on Ocean Avenue. Um, came here with a little, some prepared words tonight in, in favor of one of these ordinances, the uh, 7 o'clock one. I really can't get too far behind the changing ordinance because I think I agree with most of the people here who say it's probably, probably a small idea. The first three or four speakers got up uh, and told stories about themselves and why, they, why it all mattered to them that they were able to park at 7 in the morning. Uh, and after I listened to those, I put my little pad of paper down and said, you know, I don't need to speak. I, I've, th this, is, this might not be a big deal. And uh, I leaned over to my wife and I said, nah, I'm not going to say anything. <clears throat> then for the rest of the time, I heard after one person explained that he gets wakened up every day. It, living in his neighborhood, Higgins Beach is first and foremost a neighborhood. And this person got up and said that if, for every single day of the summer, he gets waked up at 5, 6 o'clock. How many of you would tolerate that in your neighborhoods? If that happened every damn day of the summer, would you say, oh, no problem, I'll, I'll buy insulation? Um, I, I, I sat there and I kind of got angrier as each person came up and spoke at the lack of consideration. Everybody talked about, oh, we have to work together. And then for the last five or six speakers, work together meant no change, you're stupid if you're telling us we can't do this. You're unfair. You're elitist snobs. I, I, I think I could go either way on that noise thing. And, and noise isn't uh, – that ordinance often mostly refers to you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, put your rock and roll music away in your loud parties. The noise that happens in the morning, nobody's doing anything wrong in the morning. I'm down there some of the time of the morning watching the sunrise and stuff. Nobody's yelling and screaming, but the simple fact of chunking car doors wakes some people up. It isn't just the gentleman who spoke. It makes it so he can't rent his house because people are dissatisfied with it. They have come here for years without that. So I kind of got, I, I got a little exercise because the, the concept of let's all work together was do exactly what we say, don't change anything, you're wrong, we're right all the time, and our convenience the convenience of being able to go at a certain time. I work a full day, too. I work 10 hours a day, sometimes 11. I go to the beach when I can. All of that convenience, this isn't limited access. It's limited, perfect convenience. Just drowns out one or two people's idea that they, they, wake, they get waked up every morning of their lives well before it's time to wake up. So I do believe we ought to work together. 
I think that I think we have. Higgins Beach is the friendliest beach I have ever been to, and I've probably been to 200 of them. We welcome everything. We welcome uh, surfers. The surfers are always considerate and polite. I've never seen them otherwise. We the dog walkers. The, the we, we take care of the endangered shorebirds. We make adjustments all the times that we, time that we've been there. Perhaps this ought to happen. Um, in 2011 or 10 or whatever it was, we uh, put those parking spaces up as an accommodation to increase access. One unintended consequence, without anybody doing anything wrong, is that the people who live there can't sleep until all the rest of us wake, at uh, the time we all wake up, not because of anything other than the chunking of the noises of cars. So what if the compromise that we did then, which was to increase access, gets modified a little bit to solve an unintended consequence? What if we say, and I, I just thought of this listening, it may be during the summer. Maybe in the wintertime it's different. Uh, there's, there's not as many people uh, that live there in the winter and all that. We move it up an hour so that the people who live there can sleep to when the rest of us sleep. There are some reasons people spoke of about uh, having difficulty uh, walking down from the lot. Maybe that could be accommodated. Whether we have the right number of handicapped spaces, I don't know, but maybe we put the, maybe we allow the six o'clock in the handicapped spaces. Um, the idea that the, the parking lot's been there for 50 years, and it's always been there for people to go and then walk to the beach. We're not gonna worry about you know, nobody's going to tell you the parking lot's going to be closed next, and you won't be able to do that. The slippery slope thing is kind of a bummer. Um, so I guess all I'm saying, and I hadn't planned to get up here at all, and a lot of our neighbors have decided out there that we're just going to listen tonight, but it got pretty one-sided pretty fast. And after the first few speakers who were really wonderful, they, they talked about why they love it, it just deteriorated into, you know, don't mess with us. We have our association here. We do all this stuff. This is a neighborhood, it's a community, it's a very welcoming community. There's no, where do you see a keep out sign at Higgins Beach? Where do you say a private property sign at Higgins Beach? How, how often do you get yelled at if you step on somebody's lawn walking up or down? Zero. We love people coming to the beach. It's my 49th year there. And, and, it, and it's, it, the most fun is when people from away come here. But I think what I heard tonight was a little bit of browbeating, a little bit of ignoring the opportunity for compromise. So we put the spaces there a few years ago. Most part, it's worked out pretty well. I think we should shelve the, the, the changing ordinance. I think everybody's got that right. Uh, but this parking thing and the convenience and all that of, uh, of people versus just the, the general, the way it ought to be for the people who've lived there for a long time, I don't know. I, the more I listen to it, the more I think you should be in favor of the seven o'clock change just out of simple fairness. Anyway, thanks. Anybody else? I'm very nervous, so if, if I'm trembling, you'll forgive me. Uh, my name is Joan Laurie, and I live down at Pine Point. And um, I would just like to address uh, living on East Grand Avenue, uh, the traffic and the car doors. You know, you choose to live where you live. If you choose to live in a beach community, then noise at an early time in the morning so that somebody can go swimming before they go to work or surf or walk, that's your choice. You're so privileged to live in that beautiful place that being disturbed in the morning is a problem. I'm so grateful that, you know, I have my hearing. And when cars slam on East Grand Avenue, then I roll over and I try and go back to sleep. But I mean, making this a noise issue and trying to restrict access in that six to seven o'clock time for people that, and you're talking about 11 spaces, how many people, you know, it, it's just, it's, it, to me, it's ridiculous. And that the fact that our town council has to deal with an issue like this when there are so many greater issues that our town faces, uh, I'm just appalled. And as far as the dress, that young lady that said, don't look, it, you know, she was very wise for her age. Thank you for your hard work and please, please see this for what it is. 
some homeowners that are so lucky to be where they are want to just keep it for themselves. Thank you. Um, just a friendly reminder that the rules of decorum, there is actually no applause, um, so just please keep that in mind. Name and address? Hi, I'm David Fillinger. I live at 10 Pearl Street. I am a year-round resident in Higgins Beach. So I did hear the gentleman complain who said he doesn't live there and his house is rented. So the complaint that it's, he never sleeps and his house isn't rented anymore seems crazy. But I've actually taken pictures every morning since July 15th at 6 o'clock. And I can show you pictures of the parking up and down. There's either no cars, one or two cars. I'm not saying it's empty. There is not slamming of doors. I'm down there every morning. I see Doug down there. It's just the whole argument is not about six to seven. There is no noise down there to speak of. And if you're getting kept up from wherever you're staying, not in your house, because that house is empty nine months of the year. So this has become a situation where people are just making stuff up. So the changing ordinance, I live there again. I've been down there every morning. I have, I'm sure there's naked people on the beach. I have never seen them. So they, how, somehow they figured out that they're never seen by, except by certain people. So I think the whole thing is silly, to be honest with you, and I think we should move on, say no to both these ordinances, and let's do something else with our time. I'm Dick Napolitano. I live at 35 and own a property at 37 Ocean Ave. I have for 23 years. It's right next to the parking lot, that parking lot that I believe one gentleman said, bring them on up there. They don't bother the people. We've been putting up with the slamming of the doors, the noise, the car radios. The town put in the nice beach uh, bathhouse fencing along the property. We um, accept that, and we are happy to see the number of people come to the beach. And the reason that Dave doesn't see the people down on Bayview at 6 o'clock in the morning is because they're all up the parking lot. So I would suggest that you leave things the way they are. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, my name's Barb Price, and I live um, Ramsey Terrace in Scarborough. I'm nervous, too, so forgive me. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for putting in the um, beach house and the slots along the ocean there. Um, we live a couple miles back, and I love to go down and just have a cup of tea in the morning before I go to work, take a little walk on the beach. Um, we have a dog. When the dog ordinance came up, I think it's nice that there's a compromise for people that, you know, don't like dogs, um, so I think that overall that's worked out. I'd love to see the dogs all congregating, getting along, all different sizes, shapes, colors, but um, I think that tolerance is something that really needs and deserves respect um, in our culture today. I don't think there's a lot of that, and people are very fortunate to live at Higgins Beach. And I appreciate so much being able to go down there and, and enjoy it. Um, I have neighbors that get up at all times of the day and night to go to their jobs. So I can hear doors closing. I can hear birds chirping at 4, 4.30 in the summer. So I'm an early bird, and I love to go to the beach. And I really appreciate the spot, and I hope you keep them. Hi, I'm Tess Hawkes, and I live in Portland. And uh, I just, I'm opposed to both these ordinances. I surf, and I love the beach. I'm from California originally, and I just found a home in Maine and just love it. Um, I understand what the residents are saying, and I do think we need a compromise, but it doesn't sound like the compromise is these ordinances. So let's take a break, actually have some time to talk, and come back. Thank you. My name is My name is Jeff Woodbury. I live in South Portland. I have no prepared statements. 
some of the folks that came earlier did a terrific job. Um, I'm going to address the general issue in that our coastal access laws in this state are over 350 years old. They were made before this was a state. They were made before this was a country. So your act of walking on the beach in your own state is restricted to public access of, what, eight miles? Hmm. Don't do anything to restrict the access. You should unanimously reject both these ordinances and take a stand here and now saying it's time to change Maine's coastal access laws. Thank you. Anybody else? All uh, right. Seeing none, I will close the public comment. So we are on the first order of, of the Higgins Beach issue, which was order number 15-068. And just so again, we're all on the same page. This is the first reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 601, the Town of Scarborough Traffic Ordinance, Section 25, Parking Restrictions, Section A, Parking Restrictions, Subsection 2 of Higgins Beach. So, at this time, is there a motion from the council? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And discussion. And I, just as a friendly note, have some thoughts and then a possible amendment. So, uh, but I would like to hear any discussion the other councillors have first before I offer my amendment. So, um, any discussion? No, go ahead. I think. Sean and, and then Peter. Yeah, um, so I have some questions. Um, I did ask the, for a report from the police chief that I would like to ask some questions, but I would also like to ask some questions just before we get into the discussions, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Sure. Um, is it possible to get a report from the committee on the process as a, that was undertaken, um, maybe at not in specific details, but um, there were some questions, I think, that are raised around that process and the openness of that. So can, can we get a report from the committee? Yeah, I mean, you want me to? Okay, you uh, That was my uh, committee. Uh, I'll give you a brief uh, history of how that came about. Um, these or this uh, complaint was brought to the ordinance committee, um, which is a committee of three of us, three sitting councilors. It was actually killed in that process, which is a term that we use. It was shot down. Um, it was not voted to be moved forward to the council level. At that time, um, I could see as chair of the ordinance committee that there was a lot of people out there um, that took the time to come forward on both sides of the issue um, and felt very strongly on both sides of the issue. And I thought that if I pulled some of those people together, we would be able to um, maybe come up with a reasonable um, compromise or at least something that we could try for the rest of this summer. So maybe not something that would go into place. I did explain that if we were to try to move ordinances through, it could take up to a year for some of these things. I'm, I think I even said a year and a half. Sometimes it can take two for us to get some of this stuff done. Um, I don't think that's an exaggeration. Um, my, at the la end of our last meeting, which was the Thursday before the ordinance committee meeting, we had a unanimous decision that was stated that we were going to come up with signage, etiquette signage. Um, and I spoke to Tom the next day to get guidelines um, upon that about how much um, we could work with Public Works, what, kind of, what could we have on the sign, what were his recommendations. We also talked about installing a camera um, and letting people know that you're, you're, you're being monitored. So if you're breaking these rules or you're, you're doing these things, we're watching you. We're getting license plates. I know that there was a complaint made to the police department where the license plate was used. And I know that the police department contacted the person who made um, that mistake at Higgins Beach, and they will never make that mistake again. It was a minor, and the father was not pleased. Um, and so I think that's an example of what can be done down there um, where we can sort of step in and not have such tight restrictions, but yet still protect some of the residents that live down there. So basically what overall came out of that, what we were hoping to present on Tuesday was we were going to enact um, signage, etiquette signage that we were all working on, and we were hoping to put a camera down there um, letting residents and people that use those 11 spaces know that you're, you have the potential that your license plate could be 
monitored, and that could be at that time turned over to the police department. Um, so that was what came out of it. It was a six, I'm now in my probably eighth month of working on this. Um, so when I hear people say like, that, you know, we're not working together or we're not, we, we actually are. We, we had people from both sides of this issue come together. Um, and yes, um, some people came out of that from what I've read, um, was not expressed to me um, that they didn't feel as though they got what they wanted. Um, and so that's frustrating to me because I wish that we could have had that discussion before I went into an ordinance meeting and was presented with, it, with these ordinances. Um, so I, that was kind of, that's a kind of a brief history of, where, of how it came down. Um, basically overall, I had wanted to, I was hoping that by using communication with these two, three, actually we probably had three different sides in that, uh, represented in that committee. I was hoping that those conversations would lead us into something that would not, would not need council action at this time. All I wanted was the seven weeks to put that sign up and that camera up to see what we could get out of it. And what I told the people in that committee was, hey, this might be ammunition. It could go one way or the other. And we might have ammunition where this really cuts down on some of these problems, or it could go the other way. And we might have, we, we might have a way to say, this is working. And then we bring it back to either ordinance or it pushes through to council at that time. It's just that I, I'm hoping that I, I gave you enough information. Plenty. Thank you. Sean, are, are you well, have another question? Or? I have a feeling because I know that Councillor Katarina is on um, the committee, so if she has any further clarification, I do have some questions I wanted for the police chief, but I can wait until Ms. Katarina okay. speaks. Um, I'm the one who made the decision to move two items out of ordinance uh, with Councillor Blaze, I, I'm, with all due respect, Councillor St. Clair, is the first time I heard that there was any possible solutions or anything that was coming out of that committee. Um, That's not true. Fred, well, I'm just letting you know where I'm coming from and what was communicated to me or not okay. communicated to me. But that, you know, that's past. That's right. Water over the dam, okay? Uh, I, I decided to move along with Councilor Blaise to decide two issues out, not necessarily because I support them. And I want to be very clear about that, and I think I've been clear about that. I wanted to move out because I wanted a vetting by the whole council on this. Quite frankly, I find it very frustrating that there is so much polarization in the Higgins Beach community over parking and related issues. And we are spending a lot of time and a lot of energy on matters that frankly, I had hoped would have been resolved by a group of citizens. As a matter of fact, I recall at an ordinance meeting saying to people, I would prefer that you folks go home, figure it out yourselves. You do need to understand that this group that Councillor St. Clair, God bless her. She, she decided she volunteered to chair this, and I give her all the credit in the world for that. It was not an official committee of the town of Scarborough. It was a private group who decided to come together. I have, I, anyone who knows me knows <coughs> that I can get a little impatient sometimes with things when I think they need to be brought forward and thoroughly vetted and thoroughly discussed in a public forum, so that's why we're here today. So I hope that answers that. So we have two, two views. Uh, <laughs> two views. Uh, As I said to Councilor St. Clair, that was plenty. <laughs> a little bit more than the, the, uh, the, the process I was looking for. So um, I, is the police chief, i got to get glass on. I did have a couple of questions for the police chief, if he doesn't mind. Um, is that? Yep. Look at me. I would like to just say, Councillor Rabine, that the Chief of Police was at one of our meetings. Oh, I believe it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so um, this is one of those situations uh, where you, um, 
as counselors, we ask questions, but we kind of already know the answer because we've asked them in private, and I just want to kind of put them on the record so that everyone kind of gets to hear them as well as what's been said in committees. And can you give a synopsis? Um, and I, I had asked a question up for the, through the town manager about over the past year, what type of complaints that we've received as well as citations regarding, um, although these issues dealt with really the parking and the issues of nudity, but I think there was also some uh, reference to uh, noise complaints and other pieces. Can you give us a synopsis of that information that you shared? Yes, sir. Um, the, uh, what I was asked to provide was from 1-1-2015 through 8-24-2015, uh, specifically how many uh, complaints we had of parking and how many tickets we issued, uh, how many noise complaints we had and how many tickets we issued, and how many uh, nude or indecent exposures we had um, complaints on and tickets issued. And the answer is that we had 70 uh, calls about parking uh, from phone in calls from folks. We issued uh, 255 tickets, and obviously the ones uh, beyond the 70 were ones that officers initiated by their regular patrols and, and so forth. Um, and uh, noise complaints, we had five noise complaints. Uh, those were not anything that related to Bayview or six to seven o'clock, um, and I can go through those go through those if you want. And we had uh, one uh, nude, indecent situation uh, that was documented, which also there was no ticket issue that, um, and that had nothing to do with a surf or anything. It was a, an older gentleman who uh, was on medication and. Um, that causes him to uh, need to go, and his son had explained to him that that's not um, really appropriate, and our officer reiterated that, and uh, and he left. They were in the process of leaving when the officers got there. Okay. The, uh, the the noise complaints, if you want, I can go through those. It was uh, basically uh, we had loud music on Shell Street at uh, 4.15 in the morning. That was in March. Uh, we had... Uh, and complain about a bonfire and, and music in, uh, around the clubhouse, and that was in April, 10:14 uh, at night. It turned out to be a, a group of kids. They were all uh, gathered up, and their parents were called. Uh, the parents came down and, and picked them all up, made them uh, clean up their mess, and took them all home. Um, we had a uh, on August 8th at 11 o'clock. We had a gentleman that was sitting on his roof. Um, on Shipwreck Road, playing his guitar and singing. And, uh, <laughs> he, was, he was asked to go inside. We had, uh, on August 13th at 1139, we, had a, we received a complaint that vehicles parked in the parking lot on Greenwood uh, beside the Higgins Beach Inn, and, and the hatch and windows were open. There was family inside. They were uh, talking and making some noise and so forth. And when a citizen asked them to to quiet down, they get into a little verbal altercation, and our officers uh, were called to that. So that's the uh, that's the gist. And and I would like to say one thing. There was a gentleman that talked about, you know, that uh, there had been written complaints and so forth. And I'm not disagreeing with that. I was asked specifically how many times we had had um, complaints called into the station for police action, and that's what I'm recording on. Thank you, Chief. John, just a I'm sorry. question, just, just for the chief light there. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Can you go over for Can us or just kind of share with us what sort of resources are being, you know, patrol resources are being used at Higgins Beach? I think there's a individual on a bicycle most days from 10 to 4-ish or 9 to 4-ish. What other types of Yes, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a reserve officer that's down there in the daytime every day that the weather permits uh, for Memorial Day on. We have uh, evening uh, officer, reserve officer, uh, working evenings on Friday and Saturday nights. And we have um, a, an officer that roves the different beaches. Uh, it was something we started last year because the, the regular enforcement folks that we were using were concentrating on the parking issues and the things around the streets and so forth and weren't really finding the ability to get onto the beach. So we. Um, we had kind of a unique situation last year with Joe Jack Antonio coming back, and and uh, we used him as a reserve, uh, to, as a kind of a pilot <laughs> program, and he went from beach to beach, and uh, actually went down on the beach, walks the beach, 
uh, looking for the drinking and, and the different issues on the beach, smoking and so forth. So, so how, many, how many hours per week do you think, like 60 to 80 hours per week of patrol? Um, well, we've got, uh, we've got six hours a day um, for the daytime, then another six hours for those two, uh, two evenings. And um, I don't recall specifically, um, okay. I, I think it's a six-hour block for the roving, but what they do is they don't, uh, they don't always do their time um, okay. start to finish. They okay. might go down to, to Higgins from 5 to 7, and then they might go down to Pine Point from noontime to 2 or something, and so they, they break it up specifically so that folks don't necessarily know when they're going to be there and there's no real routine to it. And, Thank and, you, Mr. And, and one last question. One of the things I've heard is that these events are occurring, but the officers there are overlooking them. Do you think that that's a fair assessment by folks that are suggesting that there's real issues down there, but we're just not dealing with them? I mean, I find that hard to believe, but that's but that's what I've been told. So I'm trying to assess sure. whether sure. we're looking um, the other way when there's real issues, or whether there's really no issues. I, I think that's a, a difficult call. I mean, I don't. Do I think the officers look the other way? No. Do I think they use their discretion in certain situations? Certainly. Um, I know that somebody spoke earlier about uh, about the uh, surfing on a on a rainy, windy day or something. And quite honestly, that comes from me, because I, I think I, I try to use some fairness and I try to look at what the legislative intent is. And, and in, in my estimation, I could be wrong. But the legislative intent of having that surfing uh, ordinance in place and bringing them out of the water at 11 o'clock was to avoid having swimmers injured. And when there are really bad days and there's nobody on the beach and it's 11:30, I recognize that they're supposed to be out by 11. But I think the amount of resources that we would use to enforce that probably doesn't meet the legislative intent. Thank you. So, Mr. Bayline, you had the floor. Yeah, I had uh, two follow-ups. So, first of all, I have to mention that you forgot one citation, which I kind of thought was a little unique, and that was on August 18th at 445. A complaint was received because the Channel 8 news van was too loud doing a story about the weather. <laughs> so You're correct. I, I thought did. that was kind of a, a nice, <laughs> unique situation, and that was on Bayview. Um, the follow right, I the, apologize. No, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so the follow-up question I have is about enforceability, and this really kind of applies um, not only regarding the parking, because it's about how do you enforce a one-hour parking, whether it's six or seven or whether, whatever time, but also how do you enforce um, the, the next uh, article that we're talking about. In your professional opinion as our expert, I mean, do you see challenges to enforceability around parking as well as the dress code is a nice way of putting the next amendment? Well, I do. And, um, and the reason is, is that, uh, you know, we have, um, um, at that time of the morning, we have, uh, that's when commuter traffic starts. That's when uh, businesses are, uh, folks are coming to businesses. And, and if they've had some kind of a situation overnight, whether it's, a, you know, a busted out window or, or a break in or something of that sort, that's when those people are calling in. That's when uh, officers are trying to wrap up their reports from the night, so that they're uh, so that they have everything done and ready for court if it needs to be in the morning. Um, there's it, there's an awful lot of things going on at that time in the morning, and we've got 54 square miles. We've got three officers generally out there, and, and I have to be honest that um, I think getting somebody down there at six o'clock to, to number one mark of of tire or something and then going back at some given time to I, I'm just not seeing it happen a lot I, I'm just trying to be honest I don't, I don't think that it's going to be tough to get people to see that as a real priority when, when there's so many other things going on. Can you address the, uh, the secondary piece which is on that way you don't have to come back up hopefully on the, uh, the dress code as far as enforceability around changing you, you know out of swimsuits and so forth? <coughs> Yeah, that's a that's a tough one as well. Um, I mean, I think uh, you know if if you have a situation where uh, our ordinance, as you know, um, uh, restricts people from uh, showing their breasts or buttocks or, or genitals, and if there was uh, in our parks, which the beaches are considered parks, so if there was somebody topless, certainly that's 
easy to deal with. If there's somebody uh, uh, showing their genitals, certainly that's something that we can deal with. The tough part for us comes, uh, I don't know exactly how to train our folks to be able to recognize how much is too much. You go down on the beach and see some of the bathing suits that people are, are in, and um, I, I'm just not sure how, how to establish. There was a there was a thing on Channel 13 News, and they kind of zeroed in on, on a woman who was laying on a towel on the beach and had the back of her um, bathing suit untied, and I don't know. I mean, they were zooming in on it as if that might be part of the problem, but I'm not... I don't know if that's what you're looking for us to, and if you are, I'm not sure how we. <laughs> Thank you for your brutal honesty, you. as always. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't crack up laughing a while yeah. ago. <laughs> it was a strong case. I wouldn't want to Thank you very it. much. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the chief before we get into discussions? Uh -uh. All right. <coughs> Thank you for your time, Mr. Moore. Thank you. So, on to discussion. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, Peter. Yeah, I, I guess I'll start. <coughs> and I guess and guess the, I, I guess where I am is kind of after reading the emails that we've gotten, kind of listening to the conversations tonight. Um, I'm really kind of concerned about the process. I'm kind of concerned about, and it was kind of addressed here earlier, how we ended up with this item on our table. And for me, and I, and I think I heard it tonight, I, I think this is a community issue. I think this is a Higgins Beach community issue, I think. I have no idea where the whole community is. I know there's 370 or so households down there, but I have no idea where the community falls out. It, it, certainly from the emails I've been getting, it seems <coughs> pretty evenly weighted in that community. It, it's, you know, there's, there's folks that are pretty equally on both sides of the issue. So I think that's a real issue. I think you heard an appeal here earlier tonight from a lot of folks saying, this is something where all the stakeholders need to come together and come up with a solution that works for the majority. I kind of feel that this process, certainly what we heard, that what we have in front of us tonight doesn't seem to be working for the majority. I mean, and, I, and I'm not, so I'm uncomfortable with supporting either one of these at this point in time. I would rather us, as suggested, take a step back get the right people at the table, have a conversation, try to find a solution that is workable for all. So at this point, I'm not going to support either one of these motions. And it kind of reminds me, for folks that have lived that, I, before I served on the council, I was very involved in sort of the dog issue on the beaches. And this really feels like a similar process. We're, we're, we're rushing into something with, without a completely thought out and a completely supported solution. So I think we need to take a breath, take a step back and spend some time and come up with a process that works, that has the appropriate input and is a workable solution for the majority of you. And so that's, that's just where I am. I'm not going to support either one of these. Thank you, Peter. So I'm going to, I'll um, jump, jump in unless there's other. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Um, I, I am going to offer, um, I, I won't offer my amendment yet. I, I realize there's two yeah. other speakers. I do just want to um, make sure I chime in with a couple of things. Um, but first and foremost, I, I did hear 5 and 5.30 a.m. quite a bit. Um, there's actually no parking on any street in Scarborough between 12, I'm sorry, 2 a.m. and 6 p.m. So nobody should be parking. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. <laughs> As I mean in my head, so, you know, so thank you. Um, I worked a whole day today before this <laughs> meeting, <laughs> um, but yeah. So the you know the five five thirty you know is actually um, a violation. Nobody should be there that early in the morning. Um, so I did just want to point that out. Um, the other thing I, I might like to point out is, um, although I appreciate um, that this is somewhat unique in that it didn't come out unanimous out of out of committee. Um, that's not unheard of, you know, that that, that does happen. In fact, I, I chaired a finance committee where I got out, <laughs> I got outvoted one year. Um, so that's not necessarily too, too out of line. Um, I, I do want to repeat something, though, that, um, and I have the luxury of something that um, 
some of my fellow counselors don't, is I was here right. for, for the Higgins Beach compromise. I was here when the work was done. There was extensive work. There was, I believe it was almost a year. Um, Judy Roy was um, the council liaison appointed to that ad hoc committee. They spent um, many, many hours on many discussions with a very diverse ad hoc group about um, trying to meet the needs of the general public. Um, and, you know, that's, again, you know, the compromise versus the parking in the summer months after some tweaking of some things down there. Um, so I, I do just want to say it's not a new concept. And, and, and certainly, I mean, and, and that study was the second, I believe there was a study before that. Um, two. Two, two. So um, how many times do you have to study the same area <laughs> to tell you the same, same kind of things? Um, I think a further study is going to tell you the exact same thing the last one is. Scarborough is changing and Scarborough is growing. It's that simple. And as time goes on, the beach demands, the neighborhood demands, that, that, that's only going to increase. Um, the magic answer is we will never have enough parking to ever appease anybody and we'll never have enough access. Um, but but I, I do just want to point out, like I said, um, you know, I don't, if anybody is interested and, and feels, you know, they need some more information about, you know, again, I mean, more than happy to supply, you know, this is first reading. That that was the one other thing I did want to mention is it's first reading. Um, you know, so you see maybe too how we feel a little of what comes out of this meeting at second reading as well. Um, I did check with Tom administratively today, uh, or yesterday, I don't remember when I talked to you. But um, certainly if, if we have interest, um, which I think is a, a great idea, uh, to put a camera up. We had a camera at one point with a live web feed. I'm not really sure what still happened there, there but, but it's not still there. Not broadcasting. So uh, certainly we can administratively and in-house right. handle plugging that camera in right there front and center, you know, parked pointing down Bayview and say, smile for the camera. Um, so I, I think that's something that's fairly doable. And, and again, you know, if there's consensus enough and interest enough as a council, uh, we could probably make that happen. So um, again, I do have an amendment, but I'll come back to that. I'm not sure who had their hand up, but we'll, matter. we'll go ahead and start. I'll wait till the amendment is made. I'll speak okay. to it. Go ahead. Okay. You make your amendment. So I have a little bit of a different view about um, some of this. Again, I'm, I'm going to kind of loop back to, um, so I was there and, and kind of participated as a counselor with some of the discussions. Um, I will say um, I, I don't support the ordinance, although I do appreciate that, that it probably stems from a good place. Um, I, I do think that our, our, our intent, or at least my intent at the time, was when we created the Bayview parking, I, I will say it was created with the concept of, one, we wanted to give something back to access, because we realized we changed a lot of streets to one way, we no longer had, you know, we leased out the parking in front of the inn, so those weren't public spaces anymore. You know, we did some changes, and, and so out of that we said, well, we'd still really like to preserve something for Bayview. Um, because it's a beautiful scenic vista, and the concept for the parking for that was short-term activities. Um, the thought here was you can go for the walk, you want to eat your lunch, you want to enjoy the scenic view, and those sorts of things. I, I have to say I'm a little surprised. Um, I, I really hadn't contemplated surfing being in a, in a short-term activity for that. Um, maybe that's kind of my own mistake um, in, in that maybe the parking is a little too long down there. Um, again, to, to me, this, this was more about, yes, we want to preserve these spaces, we want to continue with access, um, but it's for short-term activities. So my motion for an amendment, and this is, again, a, um, in the form of a motion, and I would need a second, is move to amend order number 15-068 to return the start time for Bayview Avenue parking to 6 a.m. and replace the one-hour time limit with 30 minutes. Second. So if you would indulge me for just one more minute and then we'll have some discussion. I like this for several reasons. The first one is 6 a.m. And, and this provides consistency. The first thing as a counselor that I look for is consistency with all of our rules and our ordinances. 
6 a.m. is the consistent time that we have already on our books for all of our parking ordinances here in this community. So whether you are at the beach or you're on Maple Ave or anywhere else, it's 6. So you know you shouldn't be on the road at 6. I'm not interested in changing that to 7. I think that the 6 a.m. needs to stay. Now, as far as the 30-minute parking, again, I'm going to repeat, it was not necessarily my intention as a counselor viewing this topic the last time um, to create, again, things that were, didn't have continuity to them. We do have, again, Vista parking at the co-op down in Pine Point. And the parking that follows along that river, because I go down there actually quite often to go do that very thing, sit and eat and enjoy the view and go for a quick walk. All of our parking along the co-op down along the river is 30-minute parking. So again, I thought, again, this is a basis of consistency, so to have consistent rules across our community and our parking areas, and I thought this was a, a fair assessment to try to do something to, to meet everybody in the, little, in the middle. So with that, that is my, my offered amendment. Discussion? Bill Donovan. Uh, I sat in the audience uh, when uh, the town council adopted uh, the 11 space parking on Bayview and I heard the remarks of the town councilors and chair uh, is correct that it was intended to be short term parking. Uh, that has turned out to be a complete failure. Uh, the parking uh, problems that the neighbors uh, have identified are very real to the neighbors and we've received dozens of uh, uh, vivid accounts of the different incidences, whether it's invading yards to change or damaging shrubs and gardens or urinating in yards. Uh, probably over 50 uh, accounts we've received. So uh, to the neighborhood, it's very real. What I think is an even more important issue is the denial of access for the purpose for which the law was passed. <clears throat> it was intended for short-term users, but what has happened is people who engage in ocean sports that really mandate, as the gentleman or one of the uh, ladies said, mandate sweatsuits, takes hour and a half, two, two and a half, three hours to do. But they are occupying the vast majority of the spaces for which it was intended there to be short-term use. And they compete for those spaces 7 a.m., 8 a.m., at the same time that a lot of people are trying to get that short walk in, walk their dog. So many, many times people will have come down expecting, I just want a half an hour on the beach. That's all I want. And all those spaces are taken. And I've seen it 7, 8, 9 o'clock many, many times. Everyone knows it's true. Uh, and the surfers, and these are all... These are good people. Uh, they are uh, doing their thing, uh, but they are occupying a space that was not intended for a two to three hour use. And so it's a denial of access. That's really what we have here. Uh, and the people for whom this was intended, as the town council uh, expressed very clearly in its adoption in 2011, are not having the uh, opportunity to park where we wanted them to be able to park. Seniors, uh, uh, people who just want a quick break at lunch. The, so uh, I feel that that, now this, I mean there's several ways to solve this and we've, we've been talking around this for forever uh, about how to do this. Uh, the no changing ordinance. Uh, Paid parking, uh, paid parking has been considered. And now an amendment to reduce it to 30 minutes. Sort of kind of get it? You're not supposed to park there. We, we built uh, a 
80 car parking lot with a changing room and hot water showers so that you can enjoy your experience. You're as athletic as can be. Getting down to the beach, which is about 300 yards, and I, pl I play a lot of golf. I walk 7,000 yards uh, every day. So, I mean, 300 yards, and, and I see a lot of surfers who do park, and they jog down. And I wish I was 20 or 25 again and could do that. So that's not a problem. That, that, that is not a problem. Uh, I would support this because it will improve access for the purpose for which we always intended. Uh, and that, let me just talk about not solving this because the neighborhood is very, very uh, frustrated by the failure to have uh, the short-term parking be used for the purpose it was intended. A huge degree of frustration. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is a private beach. Uh, it's owned by the abutters to the beach. That's main law. Now, all of us, every single one of us would say, that's kind of anomalous. It's like a, the ocean should be a public access facility. We all feel that way. There is no disagreement. There's no dispute at Higgins Beach about that. No one wants to bar the gate. And for 100 years, the citizens of Higgins Beach have welcomed all comers. Uh, uh, so what I've been thinking all along is, <clears throat> The town council controls the street. The owners of the beach control the beach. And, and make no mistake, when one person wants to control the beach, they look at Prout's Neck, Western Beach. <laughs> the owners of uh, Western Beach decided that they did not want to have dogs from April 1st to October 1st. Bang, they, pat, they, they posted it and that was it. So when you think about a compromise, think about making sure that the people with whom you are trying to reach a compromise don't feel abused. And right now, the Higgins Beach community feels abused. Whether, whether it's right or not, they feel abused. Uh, uh, so. Uh, what is the most modest compromise that we could ar arrive at? Well, we could say, well, let's not do the changing thing. Let's not do the 6 a.m. thing. Let's have the ordinance be enforced the way it was intended to be. It's 11 spaces. It's still 11 spaces. They will all be used. But now they're not going to be used by people in wetsuits. They're going to be used by a casual walker, a dog walker. All of these people are the people who are being shut out. It's not fair. That was the purpose. Seniors, uh, guy coming by on his lunch, lady coming by for a, a half hour on the beach because it's a nice day in November. So I favor this because it accentuates the point of the original passage for these 11 spaces. Let's make sure that the spaces are used for the purpose that was intended, short-term use. And I think this is a very good neutral sort of uh, compromise that is, uh, allows the people of Higgins Beach to say, we can get behind this. Uh, and at the same time, allows the community to say, oh, we get our access back, and no harm, no foul, because the parking lot is open at all times for which surfing is allowed. All times. Wonderful facility. Park in the park. They can change in the parking lot. They can change in the changing room. Uh, that's their choice. Take a shower afterwards uh, instead of doing their own little showers on the side of the road. It's a welcome compromise, and it's something that 
this community will embrace because it's fair to both sides. Thank you. Um, just for one quick thought, and then, yes, yeah, Sean, I'll, uh, I wanted to just reiterate one thing about my amendment that does not change. My amendment um, does not change anything to do with winter hours. Or the winter, so it's it's the half hour for summer parking season, and then it's regular. You know, you can park there for a couple hours. Nobody cares after that. So, <laughs> gotta come come the fall. What is it? September. I lost my my baby. September sixth to April thirtieth. Sean. Uh, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. First is. Um, I want to thank uh, really everyone that I've had a chance to talk to. I've been down to the beach um, way more than I've ever done in about the 20 years I've lived in Scarborough. And so I've got to tell you, it was and by the way, at many different hours of the day ranging, I think my earliest meeting was at 6 o'clock in the morning, and the latest was about the same time at night. And so it's absolutely gorgeous down there. It's wonderful people. There's wonderful users. The problem that we're dealing with isn't a problem with the laws that we have. The problem that we're dealing with is people's behavior. Mm. That's plain and simple. It's not about the law that we have that's wrong. It's about the way that people behave and the way they treat each other. So when the speaker got up and spoke about wanting to be human again and working together, um, I think it was Mr. Kane who actually said, it. by the way, you summarized the 15 years I've been on the town council in one statement, and that is everyone stands up at that podium and says we need to get along and we want to do things together, but then they sit there and say, but I'm right, you're wrong, I want everything that I want, and you can't have anything that you want. And then we're left to make the decision and try to find that compromise, and uh, that truly does summarize every dilemma that we've dealt with, whether it's dogs on the beach, the school budget, um, other ordinances, uh, you name it. So um, it's a, it was a good uh, synopsis of the challenge that we face. Um, I agree with um, Councillor uh, Holbrook as well as Donovan. For me, this issue um, is about um, not necessarily access to the beach. It's about fair access to the beach. I think that the half-hour compromise really, for me, is more about consistency in our own policies and our own laws um, because, you know, it's very difficult to govern. And when you sit there and say, well, um, one area of town should have an hour, but in another area should have a half an hour, how do you explain the differentiation between two different communities that have just as much right no matter what they do and contribute just as much to the tax base um, as each other. So for me, it's really about that. The dichotomy in supporting that is at the same time when I hear citizens tell me that they're, they're problematic with the noise, particularly on Bayview, because by decreasing the hour long, you're actually encouraging more traffic that actually will make more noise. So the balance is, is you know, you've got to find the balance in that. And so I think for me that balance is the public policy statement is saying, we're getting back to the original legislative intent, which was we want more access for more people. Um, it was about how do we get that access, and it's about the short-term use, and it's about the consistency in our policy and our laws uh, for all our, you know, like, like you brought up, uh, Jessica, it's, it's the same rules that we now have over at the co-op beach. I call it the co-op beach, but, yeah, I you know, know, I hope everyone knows what I'm talking about, um, the boat landing beach. So Maybe we don't want We want that to speak. Right. So uh, I, su I support this amendment as it's been proposed. <laughs> Uh, Kate, I think you were next. Sure. Uh, I don't support this amendment. Um, shocker. Uh, I don't think this is an issue of uh, surfers versus everybody else in the community. Uh, it would, because of some issues that I have, it would take me longer than half an hour to walk that beach. Um, it would take me 45 minutes to an hour. I've done it. Um, I also have spent numerous hours this year down at Higgins trying to figure this stuff out. Um, way more time than I've ever spent at Higgins, also, since I've lived here. Um, this is an extremely frustrating evening for me, um, and quite frankly, I'm a little thrown. Um, so I apologize. I'm trying to get my thoughts in order because I'm not, I, I, there's been a few things that have gone on, and um, wow, I'm just a little shocked. But I'm not going to support this. I don't think this has anything to do with surfing. Um, I have not gotten one single complaint from one person who has not had access for at 6 o'clock in the morning to park down there because they wanted to walk the beach because there was 11 spots taken up by surfers. Not one single email. I have not received 50 emails um, about people ruining lawns and peeing in public. I don't know. Maybe they're all going to you, Councillor Donovan, because you live there. I don't know. I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm saying I have not seen those. 
Um, I will agree, I think, with Councillor Hayes, who said there has been in the last few days a, a good split. Um, we are getting both sides of the issue, so that's always appreciative. I, I don't care where I fall, it's always good to hear the other side of it, because you never know how this is going to play out. Um, and that's quite apparent by this evening. Um, but I, I'm not going to support um, the amendment, and I'm not going to support either ordinance. Peter. Yeah, and I guess I'll weigh in and, and you know talk a little bit. I thought this evening we started talking about the purpose of what we were considering was because of noise issues and changing. This has now morphed into a conversation around access. And what I am concerned about is clearly by changing it to a half hour, you do then block out the surfers, which may or may not be the intent. I don't know. But you certainly had a bunch of people that got up tonight and said because of certain physical disabilities they may have, and we, they shared some stories with us that a half hour does not give them enough time to get out of the car, to get down and enjoy the beach, and get back to the car. So I think to do that, you're, you're actually restricting access to people. I mean, people share some wonderful stories about why they want to go down to the beach. And, and, I'll, uh, and I agree with Council Secretary. I haven't heard that there's a real access issue at 6 o'clock in the morning for those parking spots. So again, I think the passion in this room, and and I'd be really curious about when Councillor Donovan said the whole Higgins Beach community is really frustrated. I don't get that sense. I get there, there are people on both sides of the issue that feel very strongly. I would love to do a survey of that community to find out where they really are. I, I think we don't know where the Higgins Beach community There's 350 so homes. I, I don't know the exact number. I've probably heard from a small minority of all those households. I think before we make a statement saying the whole Higgins Beach community is really frustrated and feel like they're being abused, we need to have the facts. And so I would really appreciate taking a step back, doing some more due diligence, do some research, and put forth a solution that works the best for the majority. I don't think anything we've talked about tonight, there's any evidence that that's the majority view of what we should do. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to support any of these things that are on the table tonight. Thank you. Ed, you had your hand up. Um, I'm going to support the amendment in actuality. I would like to see no parking down there because that's what the original ad hoc committee came back with, no parking on Bayview. And the town council felt different and implemented it. And ever since that happened, there's been problems down there. I came to the Ordinance Committee two years ago uh, about the changing down there, the inappropriate behavior, and basically what happened was um, the Ordinance Committee asked me to meet with uh, the Chief of Police and see what we could work out with perhaps the VIPs. and. We did that. Um, the VIPs were asked to go down on different days of the week and different times of the day and talk to people and hand out uh, brochures about behavior. Um, it, did, it didn't amount to anything. And then last year it started to get worse and actually we tried to bring it forward last year and mm -hmm. we just never got, got into the ordinance committee until this year. Um, and I realized that returning to no parking down there is not going to be uh, uh, agreed upon by this council. But I believe that the inappropriate behavior uh, is an issue that can be addressed. Um, granted, it might not be illegal or anything like that, but anybody that walks down there, has a home down there, and sees some of the things that are going on, it is not very appropriate for any community. And we are a neighborhood that Higgins speech, just like every other neighborhood in this town. And the people in that neighborhood should deserve some respect. And that's all that we're trying to do here. 
Therefore, I think that this is a, this is a good start. I don't know whether it's going to work or not, but it's a good start, and I'm going to support it. Uh, the first, Jimmy. Um, a couple of things. First of all, with all due respect to Councillor Hayes, um, I don't see that we need to have any surveys or further surveys at Higgins Beach. I know I'm sitting here with a pile of studies and reports and surveys and whatever, the most recent of which is 2011, um, that's been done. Um, so that's, that's where I stand on, on that. Um, I do want to make it very clear to people who are under the mistaken impression that I would ever, ever support removing parking on Bayview. I never would. So you can hold me to that. Um, I think that um, the intent of the council at that time was to allow for more access to the beach by certain groups of people for short term. That was the, what we co would call the legislative intent. And for that reason, I do support this 30 minute uh, change to the timing. My greatest fear and my greatest concern is this continued lack of cooperation on all sides that, that continues. Um, I fear that public access to this privately owned beach uh, could be jeopardized. There are a lot of court cases going on right now in the state. We've got Moody Beach, we've got Goose Rocks Beach, we've had down east, I can't remember if it's Eastport or whatever, Eastport. surf riders, because I know they've been involved uh, in as amicus uh, briefs on some of these uh, cases. Um, Something like 96% of the waterfront in Maine, and I'm including lake frontage, is privately owned. I think that's a problem. And there's a gentleman who spoke of that, to that. Uh, I would really like to see uh, the efforts of everybody on all sides of this issue uh, focusing on graining, excuse me, gaining some true public ownership of the beachfront uh, and waterfront statewide rather than skirmishing over changing clothes, hours of parking, who's doing what. Uh, on the beach, um, but again, that's you know just my opinion. Uh, as I mentioned before in my research on the evolution of parking at Higgins, it's clear to me that the intent of parking on Bayview was short term. Thus, in recognition of that original intent, I fully support reducing the parking time to 30 minutes, which should accommodate dog walkers, the elderly, and the worker who wants a quick lunch at the beach, and others who have been denied access by those who tend to park there more than an hour at a time. Some of you may have noticed I've been skulking around the beach for the last month, driving my Prius or walking with my hat pulled down and my sunglasses on <laughs> at various times. Um, just, just seeing you know, what goes on. As you, as you may or may not know, my mother-in-law lives down at the beach. I spend a lot of time at Higgins. Um, and, you know, there are people who hog the parking spaces, particularly on the weekends. Um, so there is an access issue there, and I think it is a short-term access for people who want short-term. Uh, I agree with Councilor Holbrook that this lines up with the other parking uh, rules in town, particularly at the Co-op Beach, and um, it only requires a small tweak to the ordinance. I will go out on the limb right now and say that um, I'm going to recommend that the changing ordinance be tabled. You know, that's unenforceable. It's kind of crazy. Um, and I would like to see this 30-minute uh, ordinance change uh, move forward tonight. Sean. So um, a lot of people have made comments. Um, of course, the public had a chance to really combine theirs. Some of the councils have done the same, so I hope that with this new information about at least a requested table that we, because I'm trying to limit my comments to just the parking since that's the item, so I, I would like to comment on that issue. A um, couple of things. Um, I agree with Councillor Blay. Um, the only way to s solve the complaints about parking on Bayview is to get rid of parking. I've said that to both sides of the table when I went down and met. I don't agree with that. But, it, but it, let's, let's be real, I mean, there's extremes to every decision that we make in life that will eliminate the problem. Just like the problem with the behavior that is exhibited between the beach and even the parking lot, whatever that might be, urinating, whatever it might be, is to eliminate surfing. That's not an option either. 
but, uh, but I think that we need to acknowledge that it could happen uh, based upon this presumptive right issue that's being debated in the courts um, you know, regarding access to a private beach. Now, a couple of things. One is whether this changes or not, I hope the one thing that does change, which I think is administrative, is that the signage that is down there for the parking does yeah. change. It is extremely misleading based on the verbiage that's on that sign as well as it needs to be improved in its placement and other pieces. And if the town you know, manager and its staff believes that the recommendation that was originally discussed around um, signage uh, on etiquette pieces, to me I hope that's more of an administrative decision that the council really doesn't need to do. It should be something that in the best interest of the public, the manager as our expert should be able to do that. So I hope he's empowered to do that myself. Last is that um, I, I, even though I mentioned the issue about the access, this is about um, consistency in our policies. Um, right now, the policy in every other beach is half-hour parking. If the ordinance committee or if a councilor comes forward at a later time that suggests that all of this type of parking gets increased to an hour, I would seriously take that into consideration at that time. But no other solution has been recommended regarding that, and it's really it's about how do we apply our laws across the entire community. And this is bringing it into conformance so that everyone is treated the same. And I would be encouraged to have the conversation about whether it should be changed at a later time. Peter. I guess just you know one last thing, and I think you know I think we're all in agreement that this really is sort of an enforcement issue. I mean we've heard about even though we have an hour restricted parking, people are parking longer than that, um, and it's really because because it's an enforcement issue. And what I'm concerned about, and I think we all need to be concerned about, and and when we had the police chief up, if we're spending 50 or 60 hours of police patrol time in the community, and we still have you know, the, these violations of parking, changing it to 30 minutes or an hour is really not going to take that issue away. And I have a real concern when we think about if it's not enforceable and if we can't, I sit every day at Oak Hill and watch people running traffic lights. There is going to be a fatality. And we, if, if we've got resources invested at Higgins Beach at 60 hours a week trying to enforce parking restrictions on 11, 11 spaces, are we spending our resources in the right place? I, I just, you know, we know what happened to the budget process this year. We know what happened to the missile budget. We know that, you know, we heard from the police chief that they are concerned about having enough resources to keep the community safe. I just think for us to pass another ordinance that's not going to be enforced really doesn't move the dime at all. So it's, it's just a thought. I'd throw that out there. Okay. Bill? Um, I think the 30 minutes uh, creates a more in-your-face self-enforcement. I actually think the surfing community will, you know, when they say, "Okay, we get it. This it is not. This space is not intended for us." Uh, and and the access issue, it's not at 6 a.m. The surf community really arrives between 5 a.m. It's illegal, but they do it. Uh, to 7 a.m. and it's and it's there for a couple of hours, so that when the people who want to get up and take a short walk between 7 and 9, and that's when the beach is crowded between 7 and 9. Everyone's seen it. It goes on all summer long. Huge crowds, lots of dogs, uh, uh, very enjoyable atmosphere there, but that's when you've got a denial of access. Between, and then at 5 o'clock at night, again, people out of work, people wanting to walk their dogs after, after work, uh, they're looking for those 11 spaces. Well, they're not there because surfing is allowed at 5 o'clock. And, and they come down, two to three hours, they're all, all the spaces are gone. And the neighborhood sees this constant around uh, and around and around. Uh, and I've heard that so many times that people are just r going to up Ashton, up Morning, <clears throat> up Pearl, because the spaces are all taken. So uh, I think it's, it, it, there's a real access issue. Uh, and, uh, and this, hopefully, by a degree of self-enforcement, because I have a lot of confidence that the surf community, once they, re they realize that this is important to achieve a compromise, they will accept it. Thank you. Anybody else? 
I'll just add, I'll just leave it with one final comment. I think this is exactly what I've been hearing for the last three or four years that I've been on this council, that this is a continuation of um, people in the Higgins Beach community trying to privatize and cut out people from this community. I think that's exactly what this is. Um, I think you've now won that battle, so you should all be proud of yourself. And, you, and this is unbelievable to me that we're going to take away more parking and more access for these people. It's uh, unbelievable. So, I'm going to follow up here. So I'd like to just piggyback on a comment that um, Sean Baybine had made. As, again, I'm going to repeat, I'm offering this amendment to add continuity um, throughout the community. I, I am not opposed to, well, I might not be, I won't be here because I didn't. I'm not running, but I, I, I would strongly encourage, let, let me put it that way. Um, I would strongly encourage, and certainly, you know, I'm not married to half an hour. This has nothing to do with the surfing or the parking or the anything else for me. This has to do with, again, continuity throughout our community. It is ridiculous to go, well, maybe if I go down here, I can walk my dog from 5 to 6, but I can only park for half an hour, but if I go over here... Nobody remembers those things. You need continuity in order to, one, have public awareness, and two, enforcement. And, I, again, I'm not married to it. If we were happy to up the one-hour one parking at the co-op, I would be okay with that. My point of my amendment is for continuity. Uh, so I, I do just want to throw that out there. Um, you know, I encourage kudos to you to revisit, you know, that at a later time as a, as an ordinance committee or whatever else. Um, but again, I, I think continuity is important. Can it always be enforceable, whether it's a half an hour or an hour? I'm not f afraid to enact an ordinance because whether or not I think somebody may or may not adhere to it any more than, well, we're not going to enforce, you know, OUI laws because not everybody adheres to it. It happens, but the vast majority of people will do the right thing. They don't, you know, just like with speeding or with anything else. I, I go down to the beach, I go park at the co-op, I leave at my half hour after I've had my Italian that I lumped down there with me, and I did my quick walk, and I leave. You know, does everybody do that? Probably not. Does everybody going to do that at Higgins Beach? Probably not. But the vast majority, I think, of people try, try to do the right thing. Um, so with that... On the amendment, which is move to amend order number 15-068 to return the start time for Bayview Avenue parking to 6 a.m. and replace the one-hour time limit with 30 minutes. So all those in favor of the amendment, this is not the main motion, this is the amendment. One, two, three, four, five. All those opposed, two. Back to the main motion as amended. Is there any other further discussion? I would just like to add that I am in favor of letting the second order from this one just table. just die. You can table it, or you can entertain a motion for that, or we can just not motion it, and it will go away too. So um, we are on the main motion of order number 15-068. Any other last moment discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor. That is one, two, three... Five, and all those opposed, Councillor Hayes and Councillor St. Clair. Brings us on to our next item, which is order number 15-069, first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments of Chapter 612, the Town of Scarborough Ordinance, creating rules and regulations for the use of parks and recreational facilities by adding a new section, 19 dressing. Is there a motion? So moved. I move to table. There's not a motion on the floor to table, Sorry. madam. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Go ahead. So moved. So moved. Second. Move to table. <laughs> um, is there a second to table? Second. Got a motion to table, though. There's no discussion on a motion to table, so. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a second. Uh, no, I've just. I seconded it. You seconded it. Yeah. You're going to be that rude, not let me speak? Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> table. All right. There's no discussion on a motion to table. It was first and seconded. I just want to be clear. It's uh, table indefinitely, or is it table to a date? Certain? Indefinitely. Thank you. <clears throat> what did you want to say? Oh, for at least.
everybody understand? We're working on the dressing portion, which is order number 15-069. There is a motion to table, which is non-debatable. All those in favor of a motion to table? That is one, two, three, four, five, six, no. seven. No? No. Six. Six in favor and opposed? One. Order number 15-070, act to authorize the town manager to sign documents authorizing acceptance of $1,690 or any portion thereof to be placed in the asset forfeiture account. This money is in the police department's equitable share for... Wait, wait, excuse me, folks, you do... We're still meeting, so please try to, you know, be polite. To be placed in the asset forfeiture account, this money is the police department's equitable share for its contribution to the investigation of criminal cases. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this item? And seeing none, I am going to close the public portion of that order. Tom, will you please just give us a quick overview of what this item is? Yes, um, obviously as, as the order uh, mentions the police department was heavily involved in this case and uh, as part of that involvement we are able to share in some of the assets that are forfeited in this case there's currency of uh, $1,690 and uh, the police department puts that in a separate account and there are statutory guidelines as to what that can be used for. Right. <coughs> oh yep, yes for $1,600 is, um, is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A first and a second. And any discussion? Mm -mm. Thank you for closing the door, by the way. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, and that is unanimous. On yep. to our next item, which is order number 15-071, Act to adopt the 2015-2016 school budget resolutions as required by state statute. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this item? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And seeing none, I will close the comment. And Tom, will you please introduce, um, which is, I've uh, always kind of baffled me. Uh, uh, me as well. I, I, I might refer to the counselor. The requirement of the um, school budget validation is just the last piece that uh, the yeah. school has to send to the state for validation. Yeah, well. mm -hmm. So we can't change anything. No. So, no. <laughs> so is this just another piece of what we kind just put it on two weeks ago? It's a formality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A formality. Yes. yes. It's a state requirement. Yeah. They have lots of well, odds. We can do this every year. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Must tune it it's out. Quick. Part of the validation process. Why? Exactly. Oh, wait. Any discussion? Be honest with you. All right. Saying none. All those in favor? And sure, why not? that is unanimous. I'm not sure if we had a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I have a motion to move order number 15-071? So moved. So she's going to move I'm first. Moving I need to yeah, do the second. Uh, second. Get it. Yeah. I think people get punchy yeah. here. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item number eight is a non-action items. We have none at this time. Item number nine, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. We'll start on your end, Peter Hayes. Yeah, good evening. Um, for the shellfish, actually, actually, David Cabot, who's the harbor master, has announced his retirement. His last oh, wow. day of work will be November 5th. For anybody oh. knows, he's done an outstanding job. So thought I'd share that. And then the second real piece of news is that for the shellfish, Commission and the Coastal Harbors, they've been named as interveners in the licensing of some of the oyster operations that are taking place. Um, and so they just want to get familiar with what's going on. There will be some more information about that as they sit down and meet with them. That's that. Then the last piece of information is really around the, um, the seniors have had a series. They've had a, a barbecue that went on, and they had... Um, at the at the summer fest, they collected about 80 surveys, which is great. They just asked a bunch of our senior citizens what sorts of services and things they were interested in doing. Um, they have a new 55 newsletter that went out in the mail last week. They are also have it on their um, website. Okay. And then in addition, they're going to start something this fall that's called the Wint Wentworth Drop-In Center. It's going to be a place for seniors to come and they're going to have card tables set up to play cribbage and cards and those types of things. It's going to be on, it's tentative, it will be announced, but they're looking to do it 9 to 11 on Fridays. 
And for the first couple of meetings, there'll be free coffee and donuts for all. So they're encouraging people to join. Cool. So with that, that's kind of my updates. Ed. Uh, none. Okay. None. You caught me with food in my mouth. Well, I can go. I was no, no, that's, oh, that's fine. No, that's fine. I'm good. <laughs> Long range planning is meeting this Friday at 8 a.m. We're going to be following up on a number of initiatives, including the uh, Higgins Speech Zoning um, initiative that's been uh, going on over the summer. It started mm, at the end of June. I'm looking at my two Higgins Speech guys here because yeah. I couldn't make that meeting. And <laughs> they had a meeting the other night. But uh, we're going to be looking at that and some other initiatives. And that's all I have to report on, Madam Chair. Uh, SEDCO takes a break during August, so there was uh, no meeting of uh, uh, SEDCO. The uh, Higgins Beach rezoning meeting was held at the Higgins Beach Association Clubhouse. Uh, very well attended, a uh, very large crowd, and uh, uh, the amount of work that was presented by the consultants was uh, <coughs> impressive. It'll take a while to absorb actually uh, the full extent of it. It is complicated. Uh, and uh, uh, Dan uh, Bacon is doing a good job of monitoring it, but it's, it'll be a task for us to fully understand it as it goes through the planning process to the town council for adoption. Uh, it's very different zoning, very different uh, type of zoning than uh, is traditional. Uh, and it's being used in communities like uh, the Higgins Beach community because of its unique characteristics. John. No report. Thank you. Um, we do, I just want to make a, a side note that um, appointments was supposed to meet this evening and we had to um, postpone. So we will be meeting prior to the next council meeting. Um, just, to, just a heads up, we do have a little bit of a backlog to go through, so we'll need to do those. Um, Historic Preservation met last night. It was a great meeting. We had uh, the opportunity way to get a, a, a surprise last minute guest speaker from that came down um, to talk with us with um, the heirs of the Larry farm. Larry, not uh, Millican. Well, it's Larry. Larry. Yeah. But um, so they're, they're very interested in preserving the building. They're very interested in um, continuing with the farming activity and, and um, was really happy and fortunate to hear that they have an interest in trying to keep it and um, maybe some ideas about how to, how to do that best and how to move forward with, with keeping it in, in time and in period. So um, with that, that's it. We'll go ahead and go on to item number 10, which is the town manager report. Yes, thank you. Uh, a couple quick matters I just want to make uh, the council aware of and bring to the attention of the public. Uh, today we did install some new warning signs at Pine Point close to the jetty. Uh, there's a phenomenon that has kind of been occurring over this course of the summer where the tides are very, uh, very strong in that area. And we've had a couple of near misses in, in that area that have really caused us to want to pay attention. So we did erect signs. They're double facing such that people walking down the beach or swimming mm -hmm. from, the, from the old orchard side, if you will, will see them. They're very noticeable. And then we, uh, from the river side, they'll be noticeable as well. Uh, so we'll monitor that situation and certainly pleased that a resident brought uh, the matter to our attention and we moved as quickly as we could. I also want to mention on behalf of the fire department, uh, they have their first annual Citizens Fire Academy and they are accepting applications for uh, that fire academy now. It's a 10-week program. It will be starting uh, September 14th and run through November 4th. And again, applications are available online. It's an opportunity for folks to learn more about fire and EMS operations and we're interested to see uh, how the community responds. For members of council, SEDCO's annual meeting uh, is October 6th. Uh, you'll, I think you've all been invited. Uh, please do respond to the uh, online invitation you've received. If you haven't received that, I can get you one. Uh, that's at the Black Point Inn. And I just want to mention that our finance director, Ruth Porter, has been recognized and has received a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. And this is mm -hmm. from the government Finance Officers Association, which is the, 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 uh, the standard, if you will, that uh, all financial reporting is based on. So that's a, a feather in her cap for sure, and it certainly reflects well on the town. 
And lastly, uh, the town did receive a $24,480 dividend for uh, workers' comp coverage. Mm -hmm. That's a direct result of our safety initiatives and uh, keeping our loss ratios uh, uh, more manageable. So we actually are seeing tangible benefits uh, through a lot of the programs that uh, HR has, has been running for the last couple of years. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So, thank you for your report, Tom. So, last item of the evening is council member comments. Let's start on this end. Oops, I have none. Thank you. None. None. Um, I would just like to um, mention, um, as I've, um, Robert Rovner had mentioned earlier, um, and which I was not aware of, I would like to share some condolences um, to the family of Judy and friends of Judy Shirt. Um, certainly she was absolutely a very active, involved member down in Pine Point. Um, and, and, and although um, I, I can't say I always 100% saw eye to eye, I, I will say I admired her passion and her cinema and, and her belief that you know, Scarborough was just, is just a great community. Um, uh, I think she'll be greatly missed down, down there. Um, I would also just note, um, again, some condolences um, to the friends and family of Sue Baruby. Mm -hmm. um, she was certainly um, a Scrabble graduate and um, a well-known name and well-liked well family. And um, So, again, um, to extend our, our condolences to uh, her friends and family as well. Um, last but not least, um, you know, I, I, I do... I might, might regret opening my mouth to say I'd love to hear the feedback, but um, you know I am looking to hear you know kind of kind of where it lands. You know the the, the, the I, I've always kind of thought you know if you've reasonably made everybody disgruntled, you probably did your job. Um, you know that's kind of the nature of a compromise. Not everybody likes it. You know I, I'm not saying my you know what we did tonight is perfect, but I, I don't think there'll ever be perfection down down in our beaches and and and. And in parking in general, parking is always an issue um, everywhere, whether that's the grocery store, the beach, the, you know, it, it's always an issue. Um, but we do the best we can, um, and we always try to, you know, again, you know, I, I always try to say to do the best for the most with the least. You know, I thought this was the best outcome with the, with the least change, with the least impact, and, um you know, try to try to do the best interest of everybody and not just the one or the few. So. Okay. Yeah, I just have a couple quick things. One, um, schools in session. Um, I know in my neighborhood, um, my the biggest issue we've had is teen drivers. I mean, they're wonderful. Parents get very happy when their kids get their license and they can drive themselves. But for those of us that have young kids that are walking to and from, the bus stops actually have gotten a little bit longer in the last couple of years, and some of the smaller children are required to walk, although I know a large majority of them are driven. Um, but I'm just asking that if you do have a teenage driver or, it's, or a driver that's starting to learn to drive, that you remind them um, that the school's in session and that there are little kids walking to and from and you can't see them over the hood of your car. Um, and they do have a tendency to jump out and cross traffic and not pay attention. Um, so I would just hope that people would um, maybe take their kids aside and we could probably hopefully avoid um, a real tragedy. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, um, I know that um, I wanted to say thank you to Councillor Blaze. Councillor Blaze and I have sat together for our entire term, um, well, his entire term and my second term, um, and we don't see eye to eye on everything. Um, usually we don't see eye to eye on most things, um, but I've learned uh, a lot from him, and I respect him greatly, and the thing that I like um, a lot about Councillor Blaze is that even though we don't agree on things, we can have adult discussions about those things, and I think that's very critical, and I thank him for um, understanding my point of view, and I understand his point of view, and I respect him for following through with his point of view, and um, I also respect the fact that he can come to me and have adult conversations with me even when we don't agree. And I think that's what makes a council. We're not supposed to all agree. We all come from different backs and forms of life. That's what puts us all together. We're not all voted on by the same people. But what makes us work is that we don't always all agree. Um, and some of us win and some of us lose. And then we have to take those kicks and we got to roll with them. And that's what happened tonight. So I just wanted to, you know, Councilor Blaze has, and I wanted to back him up on this, for three years tried to get this on the Ordinance Committee's agenda. And we had 
we did try that with the chief one year. The second year, we had trouble getting it on the agenda because we had some other issues. And then this is the third year. So this man has been trying for three years to get this in front of um, the ordinance committee. So I thank him for, um, for that. And I wanted to back him up on that. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Uh, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, I should have brought it up in the liaison reports. But I spoke to Dan Bacon uh, last night at the uh, uh, Higgins Beach uh, code repair, which, by the way, was an outstanding meeting, and the the group that is working on that is they are really top notch. Um, they get into everything. Uh, I think it's going to take a while for the community to really respond to it and understand it and to understand what they can do. But once I think once they they really see what it can do. Uh, it's going to mean a lot to the community. It's going to mean a lot to the town, too. Uh, the other thing is that the planning board at their last meeting approved the first um, cell tower outside of an industrial area. And that was at the uh, uh, gun club. Mm -hmm. And the, the process, which we worked on diligently for a long time last year. Worked very well. Uh, they've got an expert that they use to answer questions. Uh, and Dan said that's working out really, really good. Uh, okay. So uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, it looks like it's reassuring. perhaps that, uh, that ordinance change is going to work for us. Okay. Oh. Perfect. It's great that's to hear. Yeah. yeah, I just want to actually, Tom mentioned about compliment Tom and his team around posting some signs and getting up pretty timely down on mm -hmm. the Pine Point Jetty. We actually, we did lose a community member down on those mm -hmm. currents. Um, this was a very strong swimmer. So actually, kudos to Tom and your team for doing that. And then, too, just as kind of a general heads up for everybody, those currents that are coming out of that river down off the Pine Point Jetty, um, are very, very strong for some reason. There have been a bunch, there have been some kayakers and other families that are experienced swimmers and boaters that have been caught up on those currents. So just kind of a heads up to everybody out there, be really, really cautious around there. There are some very, very strong currents that run through there. So thank you, Tom. All right, and that's it. So next item, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Okay. That way I have it with me. Yeah, my attorney. Oh, my God.